20th Century Vampire by Joe Turner. I love the dark and bitter taste of a 21st birthday party. Up here in my tower, high above the city, I watch over our birthday girl. Good night, Louise. There she goes, a leather-clad vampire riding into the night with her boyfriend Wayne strapped to her back. <sighs> the first time is always special. Ancient honor and duty demands that I teach Eloise the language and law of vampirism. From now on, she must dress in the finest capes of black velvet, sleep in a silk-lined coffin, wrapped in a swirling mist, and um, give up her job in the co-op. This checkout girl is now a vampire. I'm starving. Mm. So hungry. So hungry. Shut up, eager, or you'll wait, Mum. Now, what's she got in the fridge for a midnight snack? Aha! Mmm, very tasty. Hello, Eve. Mum. What are you doing? It's after midnight. I'm just having a snack. That joint was meant for the Sunday roast. No, I was a bit peckish. If you'd waited till tomorrow, I'd have cooked it for you. It's fine, raw. <laughs> so the uh, vegetarian thing was just a phase? Mm, I suppose so. <laughs> Is he got all right? You won't eat the dog, will you, love? He's a great comfort to me. Don't be daft, Mum. Why do you always look so sad, Eloise? I was born under a black cloud, Mum. Yes, I know, and the nuclear holocaust just round the corner. But you do seem a bit more cheerful these days. I'm just a tiny speck of dust in the vortex of despair and alienation. Perhaps if you had a boyfriend. What about that Wayne at the co-op? Don't fuss, Mum. Well, eat up your snack. You could do with a good meal to put some colour in your cheeks. OK. Oh, and wipe that blood off your chin. It is nice to have you home for the weekend. <laughs> Good night, dear. Don't have nightmares. Good night, Mum. Oh, Eloise. Yeah? Cheer up, love. It might never happen. Oh, I hate it when she says that. Anything else to snack on? Black pudding. Perfect. Keep running. Catchers, cut it off! You're not catching me, you pogs-ridden peasants! Another piece of Battenberg, Lucretia. Mm, I'd love to sink my teeth into that. Tea, Mum. Lovely. Tell me tales of your life, lovely Louise. Not much to tell. I'm still a checkout girl in that stagnant pond of despair they call a co-op. See? You're right. She's positively chirpy compared to last year. Mm. Your Auntie Lucretia's brought you a present. It's not my birthday till Friday. Never mind. Open it now. A toothbrush? You look after your teeth and your teeth will look after you. Open wide. You show, Auntie Lucretia. Ah. Mmm, sharp as razors, coming along nicely. Oh, precious little eager has sniffed me out. Let him in, Eloise. I don't know about little, he's an Irish wolfhound. Are you sure? Oh, he wants to see his auntie Lucretia. <laughs> <laughs> he loves to chew on Lucretia's arm, doesn't he? He loves his Auntie Lucretia. <gasps> Lucretia, be careful. He's biting you. But Auntie Lucretia bites back, doesn't she? <laughs> Lucretia! <laughs> oh, don't fuss. I only give him a little nip. Now, stand up, Eloise. Let me have a good look at you. Feast your eyes. I'm not long for this world. You look more and more adorable every year. Your thick, dark hair and pale complexion. That's makeup. I'm not wearing makeup. Those dark green eyes and ruby red lips. 
That's a nice dress, dear. It's a lovely shade of... What is that colour? Black. Yes, but it's quite a cheerful black, isn't it? <laughs> when I was a girl, the menfolk of our village would weep to see my beauty and sacrifice small animals to honour my name. Oh. When was this? Ah, oh, the good old days, back in the old country. <sighs> oh, well... The butter bag was delicious as always, but it's time to go, I think. I'll get your cake. But you've only just got here. Eloise, I'd like you to visit me on your birthday just before midnight. Here is my card. Keep it safe. See you next year, Lucretia. toodle do. Bye. Mum, who is that woman? I don't know, love. But she never forgets your birthday. I must keep running. Catch her! Cut her off! You're not catching me, you pogs ridden peasants! Cut her off! Tie her off! Stop struggling, girl. We got you now. Oh, let me go! I'm an evil witch girl, and we're gonna burn you in this dark forest. Hey, ugly crone, stop chewing that turnip and light the fire! She's a dirty devil bitch for sure. Let me jab her in the face with my flaming tar. Eat my spit, you black toothed old troll. Oh! That's why we call you Ugly Crone. No need to thumb me. The witch is spitting has given me a strange new beauty previously unknown to humankind. From henceforth, I shall be known as Beautiful Crone. Very well, Beautiful Crone. What shall we do with the witch? Simple village folk. What say you? Burn the witch! Yeah! Burn the witch! Burn the witch! Burn the witch. You don't understand! Don't she look like a tragic gothic heroine of noble birth? Actually, I'm a checkout girl at the co-op. I'm going to burn in hell for your evil deeds. No! Please! Let me go! Ah! Oh, God, I hate Monday mornings. Wakey, wakey, pop me, rise and shine. Sod off. Come on, curtains open. Ah! Sun's out and the birds are singing. And the bottomless pit of despair beckons another suicide. That's not a nice way to describe a small supermarket. Go away, I hate you. I've brought you a mug of tea. How was the weekend at your mum's? Plagued by nightmares and midnight snacks. I had a nice time too, thank you for asking. How was your weekend? I went pony trekking and saw twelve butterflies. I have a vision. The four pony trekkers of the apocalypse with a cloud of black and angry butterflies swarming above their grotesquely misshapen heads. That reminds me. Are you going to go out with Wayne? Why are you trying to pair me off with a man whose name only springs into your mind when I mention grotesquely misshapen heads? Correct me if I'm wrong, Eloise, but you have no friends and everyone who knows you hates you. Are you suggesting there's something wrong with that? It's not a moped, it's a 1972 Triumph Bonneville. You all go fast, will you? Of course not. Trot on, Bonnie! Wheelie! Oh! Chop, chop, Wayne. It's Monday morning and there are hundreds of super safe bargains for the happy shopper. Permission to speak, Mr Jenkins. Go ahead, Wayne. Can we speak man to man? We can try our best. I was just wondering whether there was any news on my request for promotion to the meat counter. It's just I really think an upwards career move could greatly enhance the fledgling romance I'm nurturing right now. I don't approve of romance, Wayne. Get on with packing those cardboard boxes. Oh, but my heart is pining with desire for the lovely Eloise. Wayne! Yes, Mr Jenkins? Boxes! Right on, Mr Jenkins. Morning, Mr Jenkins. You look a bit windswept, Debbie. More like a force ten gale, Mr Jenkins. Biscuits, snacks and savoury nibbles. Aisle seven, please, Debbie. Nice weekend, Eloise? No. Good. I take it you're to blame for the lovesick Wayne. I just keep me head down and try to survive in this bleak veil of nothingness. And I shall try to make your life here as miserable as possible. Thank you. Now, while I try to devise some impossible task that will cause you everlasting pain, could you fill in until five? If I must. Oh, Eloise. What? Cheer up. It might never happen. Ugh. 
biscuits, baked beans, bread, bacon, broccoli, butter. Blasphemy! Devil washing! Wishcraft! And French kissing the village priest! I don't know what you're talking about, and why am I strapped to this chair? You are stand accused of any crime. Will you stop dribbling on me? The villagers are testify against you. Well, don't trust them, they're peasants. No one came forward to speak on your behalf. That's because everyone hates me, except Debbie, and she wouldn't be seen dead in this dungeon. Confess now, and a place in heaven is yours. Has this got anything to do with me not having a boyfriend? I'll go out with Wayne if you like. Fish your eyes on a delightful torture equipment. First, <laughs> we have the rack. Another quarter turn for the sheep molester. <laughs> and then the red hot poker change the landscape had the meaning of divine retribution. Oh! <laughs> I am going to enjoy your pain. Not necessarily, slobber chops. I know this is just a dream. I'll wake up in a minute and you'll be history. Excuse me, miss. <laughs> You're no fun. Miss, excuse me. Get the carotene machine now. Excuse me, miss. Oh, sorry, I was miles away. Somewhere nice. A rat-infested torture chamber. Hmm. I was just wondering, is this chin of tuna dolphin-friendly? No, it hates dolphins and goes seal-calling at the weekends. Really? Eloise! Eloise, have you heard the news? What news? Wayne's been promoted to the meat counter. Hello, hello, chat alert, I can hear chatting. Oh, Mr Jenkins, I didn't see you. Exactly. It's just one of your many mystical psychic powers, isn't it, Mr Jenkins? We'll have no talk of supernatural in my supermarket, thank you. I'd better get back to sacking those shelves. Eloise? Yes, Mr Jenkins? About your clothes. What about me clothes? Do you have to wear so much black? It's my response to a decaying world. It's depressing the customers. A lot of them are on drugs as it is. We don't want to tip them over the edge. Pass me the beetroot. Are you sure you don't want me to cook? No, give that a stir. Now, just a dash of sauce. Taste that. Oh, it's horrible! Yeah, but it's a lovely colour. I don't think brown's a lovely colour. What do you dream about, Debbie? Actually, I have a recurring dream. I'm at the village gymkhana riding a chestnut pony with yellow ribbons braided in his mane. And I float over all the jumps and win the gold medal. The same dream every time? No. Sometimes we fall at the first jump and the pony splits open and his guts slop out and... A swarm of killer bees burst out of his innards and start attacking me face. Get off! Get off! How often do you get that? Only if I eat cheese. Tell me your dreams, Eloise. I keep having the same too. In the first one, I'm chased through a forest by a mad lynch mob who catch me, tie me up and burn me at the stake. What about the other one? I'm in a dungeon strapped in a chair with a bloated cardinal interrogating me. How does that one end? They garrot me. No ponies, then? Why do I share a flat with you, Debbie? Dunno. Don't you think that Wayne looks smart in his new butcher's apron? Very nice. He's feeling a lot more confident since his promotion. I think he might ask you out tomorrow. Do you need the bathroom? No, why? It's dark. I'm going to lie in a bath of cold water for a couple of hours. I sent romance in the air. Hello? Oh, Eloise, darling, a thought has just entered my head. In case you were wondering, the nearest blood donor center is in Westgate Street, opposite Marks and Spencer. Have a nice day. Oh. I'm getting worse at mornings. <laughs>
Hello, Eloise, it's me. Hello, Wayne. May I speak to you? Difficult to say, Wayne. If I don't finish pricing these kinds of alphabetic spaghetti, my will to live may finally expire. Are you feeling a bit poorly, then? I can't sleep. I'm ravenously hungry all the time, and the sun hurts me eyes. Those dark glasses suit you. What do you want? Notice anything uh, different about me? Of course. I'm not blind. You're wearing a dead-fetching, blood-spattered butcher's apron. I try to keep it clean, but there's so much blood on the meat counter. I can imagine. See, I got me promotion, and I feel that now I'm leaping up the co-op career ladder, I'm in a position to declare my feelings for you. <laughs> Tell me more about the blood. <laughs> I'm proud to announce that I would like you to become my official girlfriend. Well, let's not rush things, Wayne. Why don't I just lick your apron first and then see how the relationship develops from there? I intend to woo you, Eloise. Strangely enough, Wayne, I feel a little faint with you standing there smelling of fresh meat. I shall accept that as a compliment. And now, I wonder whether you would do me the honour of allowing me to escort you to a fine Italian restaurant for a sumptuous romantic dinner to celebrate your forthcoming birthday on Friday night. Well, they've banned public hanging, so why not? Is that yes? I think so, but I'm not really feeling myself. Oh, this is the happiest day of my life. Hello? Hello, Eloise. It's Lucretia. It's 7.30 in the morning. I know, it's naughty of me, but I could not resist sending you a little birthday present. Don't shake the box. You might kill him. <sighs> I hate mornings. The postman left a package for you, lucky girl. Open it now, open it now. I gave it a little shake. It squeaked. Squeaked? Oh, hello. Auntie Lucretia? Oh, hello, darling. I just phoned to thank you for the present. Oh, isn't he totally adorable? Uh, totally. I remember how much you wanted a pet as a child, but hamsters and gerbils like a certain style, don't you think? Yeah, I've always wanted a pet bat. Make sure you take a good care of him. I'm not sure I know how to look after a bat. So easy. If he starts to look a bit peaky, find the nearest field, plow a single furrow, copulate in it, and then slaughter a lamb and cast its entrails on the ground. It's a bit messy, I know, but it could save you a fortune in vet's bills. Bye for now. Bye. Oh, oh, don't forget, you've got a dentist appointment today. And as I always say, you look after your teeth and your teeth will look after you. I thought I was weird, but that woman's got bats in her belfry. Whoa! You nearly had my thumb off! Oh, you shouldn't have stuck it in there. I'm a dentist, that's my job. Look at that, you've done it again, it's all bent out of shape. That's not my fault. That was my unbreakable tungsten probe, you've ruined it. You told me to bite. I didn't tell you to wreck my entire toolkit of expensive dental instruments. Do I need a filling? You need a government health warning. Your teeth should be registered as dangerous weapons. Can I go, then? Yes. But if your upper canines protrude any further, you may have to wear a brace. Damn! You don't want to look like Dracula. Mum? Yes, dear? Do we have a history of mental illness in the family? No, dear. Why do you ask? Nothing, really. It's just that I can't sleep. I'm plagued by nightmares. I'm ravenously hungry all the time. And I feel faint at the smell of meat. I see. Have you got a boyfriend yet? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Eloise. Happy birthday to you. People are staring at you, Wayne. Everybody loves a birthday. What are you doing? I can't get a top off this bottle of lager. Can you call the waiter for me? No need. Pass it here. Wow, you must have good teeth. Well, as I always say, you look after your teeth and your teeth will look after you. I'm ever so chuffed that you agreed to come out with me tonight on a date. It'll probably be a disaster. Everything I touch turns to crud. How come you always look so sad and sulky, Eloise? The world, Wayne, is a black and alien place that has no space in it for me. Oh, go on. Give us a smile. No. It takes less muscles to smile than it does to frown. My face needs the exercise. Eloise? What? 
Cheer up, it might never happen. Wayne, if you ever say that again, I will rip your throat out and feed it to rabid dogs. Pardon me, message received and understood. You're a garlic bread, madame. About time, too, I'm ravenous. <laughs> oh, is, are you all right? You look a bit pale. I mean, a bit paler than normal. I think I'm... I'm gonna be... Oh, crack, Eloise, what did you have for breakfast? What's uh, going on here? Sorry, mate, my girlfriend's feeling a bit sick. Should I fetch a bucket? Well, it's too late for that, mate. She, she's in full flow. <laughs> she's a puking all over my table. She's not my girlfriend, really. Well, it's our first date. But I hope that one day soon she will do me the honour of becoming my official girlfriend. Madame, could you stop throwing up, please? You're frightening the other day. It's a birthday. It must be the excitement. <laughs> Madame! Oh, Eloise, that is the most horrible shade of brown I've ever seen. Please stop her. She flooded the restaurant. Well, there's no stopping her now, mate. We'll just have to wait till she runs out of pew. <laughs> I told you it'd be a disaster. I'm still having a good time. I'm still hungry. Where are we going? I said I'd visit me auntie tonight. Come on! She only lives round the corner. Bloody hell. It's a castle. In the middle of town. I never noticed that before. You sure this is the right place? It looks dead creepy. Shut up, Wayne. Ring the bell. <laughs> You could wake the dead with a doorbell like that. It's open. Come on. Oh, look at the cobwebs. There's mould growing on the walls. This is my kind of place. Personally, I'd rather have a bungalow. Come on, there's a lift. Yeah, it don't look safe. I'll take the stairs. There are no stairs. Come on. Which floor, madam? There's only one button. So tell me about dear old Auntie Lucretia. Have you washed recently, Wayne? What kind of a question is that? I smell meat. Bloody hell! It was old bottle of Old Spice and two cans of Brut. Yeah, I can smell that too. It's really tough getting the meaty smell out after work. I like it. You do? Yeah. Nearly at the top. Now, don't be frightened, Eloise, but I think I'm becoming overwhelmed with powerful feelings for you. Not now, Wayne. Nobody here. Looks like she's gone out. Looks like she was never in. What a brilliant place. You all right, Eloise? I'm just a bit excited. You look great when you're excited. Let's have a look around. Your aunt's not a big fan of furniture. Look up there. She really has got bats in her belfry. What's that wooden box? It's just an old coffin. Look, I know this is a dank and smelly castle, but would this be a bad time to suggest that we enjoy our first kiss? Yeah. Help me get the lid off this coffin. Oh, bloody hell, Eloise. I'm trying my best to be romantic here. I'm wooing as hard as I can and this date is just going downhill fast. First you flood the restaurant with puke, then you force me to this rat-infested tower and now you won't snog. I'm getting spurned here, aren't I? Grow up, Wayne. No, you grow up. All this moody, miserable stuff. Everyone hates me, the black clothes, the sulky looks. Just cheer up a bit, Eloise. Give us a smile. It might never happen. <laughs> right. That's it! Eloise, don't look at me like that! Eloise! <laughs> you asked for it! Wait, what's happened to your teeth? I've changed my mind about the snow again! Ah! Oh. Crikey! That is the spot! Oh. oh, good morning, Eloise! Um, oh dear, what a mess! What have you done to that poor boy? Lucretia! My, you were a hungry young bum. <laughs> but you must learn to be more tidy now that you're one of the honourable bloodsuckers. What have I done? You have quenched at first. Face it, girl. You're a vampire. A vampire? Well, don't be daft. Oh, yeah? Look at your boyfriend. Oh, he, he, he's not really my boyfriend. Oh, poor Wayne. The first man to show interest in me for months is now lying at my feet in a pool of blood. Feels good, doesn't it? it feels great. 
Mind if I have a little suck? Auntie Lucretia is my date. You're right. You caught him, you eat him. But uh, wipe that blood off your chin. It's making me feel pecky. <laughs> Will he be all right? It's a very clumsy vampire that kills when feeding. You only need a mugful, for goodness sake. Don't worry, he'll forget everything when he wakes up. He's been quite nice to me recently. Well, don't feel guilty. They take a pint at the blood bank and all you get is a cup of tea and a biscuit. Will he be a vampire now? No. It's not a disease, you know. We are special. Secret race. No longer would you tread with ordinary mortals. You've already been reincarnated twice. The dreams. I was burnt at the stake. Oh, spring 1327. Merry old England. I knew it. And I was garroted. Oh, that bloody Spanish Inquisition. This is a lot to take in. Uh, that's why I had the problem with the garlic bread. By the look of your hair, you've already noticed that you cast no reflection in mirrors. No, it's meant to look like this. Oh, well. It's a design fault in vampire evolution. Mortals can see our reflection, but we can't. Still, most vampires learn the basic of personal grooming without a mirror in a few weeks. For you, a few minutes, I think. Hey, can I turn into a bat? Now, who is being daft? I know, you've got a million questions. That's why you have your Auntie Lucretia to teach you. We stick together, vampires. Remember, blood is thicker than water and a whole lot tastier too. I have this strange feeling coming over me. I think I'm happy. I could get used to this. Oh, it can be fun being a vampire. Cross my heart and hope to die. Come on, I'll show you my crucifix collection. I've got 94 so far, plus 29 stars of David, 7 fires of holy water, and a 4-leaf clover set in plastic that says, I love Val Dunican. <laughs> Bye, Lucretia! Bye, Hold on, Wayne. <laughs> I'm the happiest vampire in the whole wide world. Ha! Seven days ago, I was a miserable, moaning mini embracing the unbreakable chains of utility. Now, I'm a vampire checkout girl. Twentieth Century Vampire was written by Joe Tanner and starred Louise Lombard, Joanna Kanska, William Ivory, Jane Hazelgrove, Fine Time Fontaine, Linda Poland, and Steve Hudson. It was produced by Liz Anstey. Hello listeners, Eloise here. If any of you youngsters get an unquenchable desire to drink human blood, make sure you ask a parent or a teacher first. Remember, I'm a vampire and you're not. <laughs> Twentieth Century Vampire by Joe Tanner. Dev, Dev, Van Helsing, you're the most beautiful bat in my belfry. Mm. You mustn't be jealous over Louise. You'll always be my favorite. <laughs> what do you mean you're not jealous? <laughs> you love a Louise? Mm. Is that healthy? Or indeed legal? Van Helsing, my darling, you are a bat. And she is a vampire. Mm. Mixed marriages never work. Um, I think you should reconsider this adolescent crush and remind yourself who is the most elegant and exquisite vampire in this town? Mm. Yes, me! I am Lucretia, the most beautiful of all vampires. And don't forget it or it'll be bat stew for tea. Mm. That's right. 
I'm not as nice as Dr. Doolittle. Your lovely Eloise is just a baby vampire. For goodness sake, she only had her first feed tonight. She still has everything to learn, and I must be her teacher. And I shall be the best teacher in the whole damn world. I'm a vampire. I knew I was different. I knew I was special. The hours I've spent on checkout till four dreaming of something like this. Life is going to be very different from now on. Are you all right, Wayne? <laughs> Hold on tight. We're nearly home. Stop gawping and help me get him off. Wow. Eloise, you must have had a great first date with Wayne. What makes you think that? Well, it's three in the morning and he's strapped to your motorbike with a couple of bungee cords and a goofy grin on his face. On up your end and give him a shove. Ooh. Wayne? Wayne, can you hear me? Did you have a nice time? Oh, yeah. Eloise. Eloise. Oh, hark at that. He loves you, Eloise. He's pissed. Pull him off the bike. Careful. Oh, he's heavy. Mind you don't. Ooh. Drop him. Oh, whoops. Never mind, he's got a thick skull. Come on, help me drag him. One leg each. Okay, up the stairs. Oh, look. His head's bouncing up the steps. I wonder if that hurts. I tell you what, for a gangly bastard, he's quite light and graceful when he's unconscious. Oh. <laughs> Let's take a breather. Drop him here. Oh. So, tell me about your first date with Wayne. What is this, a test? How come you've got this prurient interest in my life, Debbie? Because I don't have one of my own. Your life's so much more interesting. It was just a normal, boring date. Really? Yes. Nothing happened? Nothing. Nothing at all? All right, you forced it out of me. We ate dinner, we had a couple of drinks... And then at midnight, I turned into a wild-eyed vampire, hungry for human blood, and sucked on Wayne's veins till my animal lust was sated. See? That wasn't too difficult, was it? Come on, I'll take the head end. Uh, you, you don't believe that? You do tell some whoppers, Eloise. <sighs> you worry me sometimes, Debbie. Hang on a minute. What's that red stuff dripping down your chin? What? You haven't told me the whole story, have you? What do you mean? I... I know what you've been up to. It's not how it seems. Oh, yes, it is. The final deadly proof is tripping down your chin. No, Debbie, you don't understand. That's I... tomato or ketchup, you and your cheeseburgers. Yeah, that's right, cheeseburgers. <clears throat> Come on, we'll tuck Wayne up on the sofa and let him sleep it off. Ooh, we're going to have a man in our flat. Calm down, Debbie. This man is dead to the world. Oh. Oh. Shut up, Van Helsing. I must get this old school desk ready in time for the first lesson. Now, I'll put the blackboard out there, posters and artwork on the walls, and a nature table in the corner. We'll need more bookcases and a school bell. Yes, you can help. And Louise is going to love her new classroom. And I'll be the best teacher. I remember my first lesson with the top vampire professor, Florence Nightingale. <laughs> yes, the mother of modern nursing was a bloodsucker. <laughs> and a damn good one, too. Eloise! Eloise, wake up! Ah, I never touched him! Oh, oh, Debbie, what is it? It's Wayne! Something terrible! Oh, calm down. What's happened? I was just scaring up, making a cup of tea, and there he was. Mm. Gone. Disappeared. <sighs> vanished. Oh, well, Debbie, now think carefully. This is very important. Are there any signs of an epic struggle between good and evil in our living room? Such as? <sighs> Blood-spattered walls. No. Grey-bleached bones stripped bare of human flesh. No. A rancid pile of smoking ashes left on the sofa. No. Well, he's probably gone to work then. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Silly me. Good morning, Wayne. Oh, 
Mr Jenkins, what a powerfully commanding voice you have. Oh, you look like death warmed up. No, I don't feel that good, Mr Jenkins. So, what were you up to last night, Wayne? Some form of devilry and debauchery, no doubt. I'd like to think so, but I can't actually remember. Beware the temptations of the dark side, Wayne. Pardon me, Mr Jenkins. You're a fine figure of a young man, but let's face it, you're not over-blessed in the brightness department. I was hoping it didn't show. Wayne, a simple boy like yourself is easily taken advantage of. I'll say no more. I wish you would. I haven't a bloody clue what you're talking about. Language, Wayne. Sorry, Mr Jenkins. Get your apron on, sharpen your little cleaver and bone that joint. We open in ten minutes. And remember what I said. I'll try. Opening in ten minutes, Eloise. Yeah, yeah. Smiling faces. It's a good morning. Not if you were woken at some unearthly hour by an hysterical flatmate, it's not. Hello, Eloise. But Wayne! Uh, how are you today? Oh, happier for seeing you, Eloise. We had a great time last night, didn't we? It was um, possibly the most important night of my life. Oh, <laughs> I'm really glad you feel that way. It was a precious moment I shall treasure forever. Really? It was, um, good for you as well, then? Oh, yes, yes. Great. Absolutely brilliant. You do remember what happened? No. Thank goodness for that. Can you tell me? Did we, uh, did we, I mean, did we do it? Do what? You know, it. I mean... I feel dead strange this morning, sort of drained. Oh? Drained? And I've got this huge love bite on my neck. Your neck? But I must have got really wrecked, because I can't remember a thing of what happened. So all I want to know is, did we do it? No. Oh, are you sure? We didn't do what you're thinking of. Good. You please? Yeah. I mean, I'd really like to do what I was thinking of with you... When we both feel we want to do it, uh, and we think we're ready to do it, <laughs> mature enough to um, to to handle it, uh, but but I'd be completely gutted if I discovered we'd already done what I was thinking of, and I couldn't bloody remember it. You make less sense every time you open your mouth, Wayne. I'm not thick, Eloise. I'm just a bit slow. It's not my fault. I was disadvantaged at school. <laughs> How so, Wayne? Well, I didn't go. I bumped off and went fishing instead. About last night, Wayne, I think you and I... It might be a big mistake. I'm not sure we're well suited, if you know what I mean. All I know, Eloise, is that in my simple and honest way, I love you with all my heart. And whatever happened last night on our first date will live forever in my memory. Oh, Wayne... Can we go out on another date? I'm free tonight. I can't. I've got to, um, I've got to go uh, to night school. Night school? Yeah. Are you trying to improve your mind? Sort of. Maybe I should try that. It couldn't hurt. At the end of our castle tour is the library. I've had it done out specially for you, Eloise. Open the door and take a look inside. That's a heavy door. <laughs> Now, what do you see? Ah, it's horrible. I'm sorry, Louise. I didn't mean to frighten you. Well, I could take your collection of medieval torture equipment. I didn't bat an eyelid at the coffins, the spiders, bats, cobwebs, anything. But this... I thought you'd feel at home. At home? It's a classroom! Yes! It's just such a shock. School days weren't the happiest time of my life, and, well, they went on for so long. Oh, don't worry. You just had the wrong teacher. Sit down at your desk and we'll begin. All right. Now, <clears throat> please pay attention, Eloise. I am. No talking at the back. Open your textbook at page one. The four main blood groups, A, 
B, A, B, and O. Each has a distinct characteristic and the rarer groups are highly prized for their unique qualities. Human blood is made up of 55% plasma and 45% fat and white blood. Back to school. Once a month. This is a very small amount and rarely in convenience. Desks. Classrooms. Cheap disinfectant. Oh, school meals. Homework. Sick notes. However, our pale skin rules out any thoughts of sunbathing. Total sunblock. Protection factor 4000 is the order of the day. Pencil cases. Exercise books. Revision. It is always the same. A few bad apples in the dark. Put your hand up. Answer the question. Pick up your pen and start writing. This is an exam. 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 Shut up, Van Helsing. I'm teaching. Is he distracting you, Eloise? Uh, no. Perhaps that's enough for tonight. But it's essential that you complete your education before embarking on your vampire life. Yeah, yeah. Look, one day you will have to train a junior vampire and then you'll thank me for being such a bloody brilliant teacher. All right. No need to get your cape in a twist. <sighs> Sorry, Eloise. I'm just not used to the responsibility. Am I your first trainee, then? Does it show? What's that? The school bell. That's the end of your first GCSE vampire class. Great. Before you go, here is your reading list. Well, not more books. Transylvanian history, the gory bits. A Grace, anatomy for vampires, a year in Provence, and Dracula by Bram Stoker. It's a bit of comedy, really, but even vampires enjoy a good laugh. Isn't there a way to speed this up a bit? What do you mean? A shortcut. A cheats book. Pass notes, you know. All the relevant information in a small, easy-to-stick-in-your-pocket slim volume. It's just... Well, I'm not that bright. Well, there is this. Vampire handbook. That's it. Perfect. A practical guide to an alternative lifestyle. But it's no substitute for studying the full texts. Bloody hell, I sound like a real teacher. I'll uh, just take this one, thanks, Lucretia. Can't carry all the others on me motorbike. Your exam will be one week from today. What's that? It's sort of written test. You answer question, I mark them and give you a grade. You, you're joking. I have to do an exam? Of course you do. It's an easy test. Do your homework and you'll pass with no trouble. Oh, that's not fair. You never said anything about a test. You wouldn't expect to drive your motorbike without passing a test first. I wouldn't have chosen to be a vampire if I knew there were tests. <laughs> don't be silly. You didn't choose, Eloise. You don't have a choice. There you go. Pint of Guinness. Ta. Sure you don't want a pasty? We've only got an hour for dinner. I'm just not hungry right now, Wayne. Crikey, that makes a change. What? Well, you're a bit of a greedy guts, usually. Do you want a thick ear? Uh, no, thank you. I'll just eat my pasty. Mmm, lovely. Good, I'm thinking. Maybe you're in love. What? I said maybe you're in love. Maybe that's why you're off your food. Wayne, we should sort something out. It's just... <sighs> I'm not like other girls. I know. That's why I find you so alluring. No, what are you talking about, alluring? It means fascinating, charming, attractive. I've been reading the dictionary. I'm only on A, but I'm improving my word power every day. You don't understand. I'm trying to tell you that I'm different. Atypical. Not conforming to type. Distinct. Different. Just shut up, Wayne, and listen. When I say that I'm different, I mean not like other girls. I mean... <laughs> that I'm special. Uh, you'll always be special to me. No, I mean really special. I know, really special. <laughs> Properly special, different. Atypical. Oh, I eat your pasty, Wayne. And that's how the early vampires discovered they could survive on animal blood when there was no human blood available. 
often on a long ship journeys, rather than frighten the crew, vampires would take a small dog or rabbit with them, a sort of packed lunch. Oh, that's all for tonight, Eloise. I take it you're keeping up with your homework? Yeah, but I don't think I'm going to be able to take this exam. Why not? Well, it's um my hand. I noticed the bandage. It's it's broken. I can't write, so uh, I'll just have to skip the test, I suppose. Uh, let me see. No, it's all right. Don't be shy. I'm your teacher. Here, let me feel. Does that hurt? Oh, 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 yeah. Oh, that's painful. I'm holding your good hand. Well, now you've 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 broken that one as well. Well, it doesn't really matter. No. Silly exam. Who needs them? I mean, you can do still the exam. You can tell me the answers, and I'll write them down for you. Great. We'll make a wonderful team, professor and a pupil in perfect harmony. Oh, bugger! Debbie, come here. This minute, chop chop. I have done nothing, Mister Jenkins. I know that. At ease. Can you think of an eight-letter word meaning short, pithy statement? Is this an aptitude test that could shoot me up the corp career ladder? No, it's the only clue in the Daily Mail crossword I can't do. On second thoughts, yes, it's an aptitude test that could shoot you up the co-op career ladder. Oh, brilliant! This is just the chance I've been hoping for. Well, do you know the answer? I'm to clue. Ask Eloise. She's good with words. Eloise. What do you want? I've got a question for you. It's a test. A test. <laughs> An eight-letter word meaning short, pithy statement. I'm not thick, you know. I'm just clever in a different way. What is this? A witch hunt? Just leave me alone. Uh, I think the word you were looking for is aphorism. Aphorism. It fits. Are you feeling all right, Wayne? A new word every day. The pumping action of the heart builds up a high pressure in the circulatory system in order to force the blood through the narrow capillaries. Crikey, this is boring. I'll never pass this exam. I'm too dim. Eloise, you're right in there, Eloise. I'm fine. You're feeling the bathroom for hours. I know. I'm revising. What did you say? <laughs> Come in. It's not locked. What are you doing with all those books? I'm revising for your night school exam. I, I, I wish you wouldn't say that word. Now the secret to revision is having a plan. Have you got a plan? No. Never mind. I always use the same plan, and I think I can still remember it. Great. You gather all the relevant books around you. I do it in bed, but it'd probably work in the bath. Then you stay up all night. Oversleep for the exam, miss the bus, get all hot and sweaty, panic, arrive two hours late, throw yourself at the feet of the teacher, and cry a lot. That's your plan. It got me four GCSEs.、Uh, I don't think it would work for me. Only trying to help. Perhaps you could make me another cup of coffee. That would help. What's a flatmate for? <laughs> I must keep revising. I've got to pass. What's next? Our bodies, ourselves, vampire health and fitness. Well, I can't be bothered with all this. Just one page. There. Common vampire ailments. Modern vampires are immune to most mortal ailments, with the singular exception of chickenpox. Chickenpox. This can be a very serious illness for vampires, resulting not only in a profusion of red spots, but shortness of breath, a sore throat, and temporary blindness. Now this is important information. Covered in spots from head to toe, and she was too ill to go to work. She's proper poorly, Lucretia. Can I see her? Oh, she's in her bedroom. You better prepare yourself for a shock. She's not a pretty sight. Eloise, your auntie Lucretia has come to visit. Oh, oh, who's there? It's Lucretia, my dear. You were late for the exam. I was worried. Oh, my exam! Oh, I must get up and do my exam. You stay right there, madam. Look at her. She's ill. Yes, she's covered in red spots. She's very short of breath. <gasps> That's true. Have you got a sore throat? <clears throat> Perhaps a little bit. And she can't see. Who's speaking?、Uh, come closer.、Mm, temporary blindness. Do you know what's wrong with me? I do indeed. 
What you need is plenty of bed rest. If you insist. Forget about the exam. It's not important. You must get fit and healthy. That's your priority. Yes. Come on, Debbie. We must let her rest. Oh, oh, yes, it worked. She fell for it. I duped the professor. Student vampire Eloise won. Gullible teacher Lucretia, nil. It's not my fault. No one told me you had to be a bloody mastermind to be a vampire. I can suck. What more do they want? I'd only have failed that exam. I'm too old for this school stuff. And I don't feel in the least bit guilty. There is no guilt here. This is a guilt-free zone. Well, it's very nice to see you again, Lucretia. But I'm not sure I've still got Eloise's old school reports. I just thought a proud mother's instinct. Ah, here we are. Thank you. Exam results. Maths, F. English, F. Geography, F. History, F. Science, F. She was always very consistent. Teacher's comments. Eloise tries hard in class, but when it comes to exams, she is a complete duffer. We were always very proud of her. I don't know why. These results are terrible. I blame the government for abolishing school milk. But she's a bright girl. She's got this phobia about exams and tests. Never ever passed one. She nearly drowned trying for a 25 yards breaststroke. But she must pass. There must be some way to help her through this exam. Lucretia, who is it? Oh, I, I guessed you were right. The cannons were on. Louise, you're better. It's a miracle. Chickenpox is a serious disease for vampires. I know. I read about it in the book. I was only pretending to be ill. Really? Oh, what a naughty trick! But you had me fooled. What made you come back? I felt guilty. I'm no good at exams, Lucretia. I always fail. I've never passed an exam in my life. And I do want to be a good vampire, but I knew I'd fail your test. Oh, but this is one exam you must sit. I know. So, here I am. Very well. Back to your desk. You have two hours to complete the paper. Pick up your pen and begin. Name all the major blood groups. Blood groups. Um, <clears throat> concentrate. Um. Draw a simple map of the human arterial system. Uh, oh, must think hard. Fill in the blanks. Blanks? What blanks? Transylvanian history is the eternal river of blood. Discuss. Who with? There's only me. Vampires are afraid of A. Garlic B. Crosses C. Priest with sharp stakes Pens down. Time up. Hand in your paper. Uh, could you mark it for me now? Yes, let me see. Hmm... I tried my best. It was um, quite difficult, especially the history section. There you go. Let me see. Another F. I failed again. Oh, there's no doubt about it. I'm just plain dumb. That's right, Eloise. You got an F on the part one of your exam. Now, part two. Part two? I thought that was it. No way, not so easy. You had to do the practical. Oh, you never said anything about this before. So what, shut up and listen. I'm the teacher, I can do what I want. Okay. First, the sucking test. Here is a jumbo triple thick ice cream milkshake with a curly straw. Most mortals take eight minutes to empty the carton. You may begin sucking. Finished. Mm, very good. Now, on the tray in front of you are three wine glasses. I'd like you to taste each one and give me your thoughts. All right, number one. Mmm. Mmm, a rich bouquet, light red, slightly fruity with a pleasant potato aftertaste. I'd say A.B. Reese's negative from a vegetarian. 
And the glass too. Mmm, surprisingly full body. Smooth flavour, a real glogging blood. I'd say that's pig blood. Chateau Le Swine, 93. Mm. And uh, finally, glass three. Mmm, deep flavour, meaty, slightly sticky, thick consistency, but it dances on the taste was like a Wagnerian opera. No doubt. That's Heinz tomato ketchup. Uh. And that completes your examination. Now, if I just thought up the scores and add the two parts together, we should have the final result. There you are. Oh, I can't bear to look. Oh, I don't believe it. I passed. I actually passed an exam. Well done. I passed. I passed. I passed. I got a D. D minus? Oh, D minus. D minus. I got a D minus. Me. Oh, thank you, Lucretia. <laughs> oh, congratulations. I'll prepare your certificate. I don't believe it. I just don't believe it. It must be quite a thrill to finally pass an exam. Not that. I don't believe I just kissed a teacher. Oh, it's just one of the perks of the job. I'm doing all right. Getting good. Twentieth Century Vampire was written by Joe Turner and starred Louise Lombard, Joanna Kanska, William Ivory, Jane Hazelgrove, Vintime Fontaine, and Linda Poland. And it was produced by Liz Anstey. So the moral of tonight's episode is that coursework and practical tests can provide a more accurate assessment of students' progress than written exams alone. Education professionals, take a note. This comes from Professor Lucretia, the best vampire teacher in the whole bloody world. Welcome, creatures of the night, to this week's episode of 20th Century Vampire by Joe Tanner. Shut up, Van Helsing. I'm talking to the listener. Can you keep a secret, listener? <laughs> I don't believe you. You're a big, fat liar. I've never met a mortal yet who didn't love to blab their mouth off. Stand still, Eloise. It tickles. 18 inches across the shoulders. 15 inches at the hips. I don't know why you're bothering to measure me. I'm a size 10. Coffins don't come in dress sizes, Eloise. And you want a snack fit, or you'll never get a wink of sleep. I don't need a coffin. I'm a modern vampire. I like my bed. It's traditional, Eloise. You'll be surprised how comfortable a well-made oak box can be. You should try mine. I had it made specially. It's an orthopedic coffin. Lucretia? Yes, Louise? W what happens if uh, someone finds out you're a vampire? Plague and pestilence! What have you done, you stupid little vamp? Nothing, nothing at all. You must never, ever, under any circumstances, tell anyone you're a vampire. Okay. <sighs> but it's a big secret to keep. And you will keep it. If you're to survive as a vampire, you talk like there's danger out there. Eloise, don't forget we are grossly misunderstood race. There are people about who would drive a stake through your heart as soon as look at you. Yeah, yeah. We are different. We can mix with mortals, but we must be discreet at all times. <laughs> discreet? Our lives depend on it. Exactly how discreet do you think you are, Lucretia? Make your point, if you have one. Look at yourself. Deathly white skin, green eyes, ruby red lips, jet black hair, widow's peak, black velvet cape. No clues that you're a vampire. I look more normal this century than any I've lived through. Oh, I'm proud to be a vampire, but I'm the only one who knows it. I just want to share this wonderful thing with somebody. I know. That's why you have me. 
Now, let's have less of this nonsense and get back to work. Van Helsing, wakey wakey! Would Eloise please report to the manager's office immediately? Thank you. Come. What's this all about, Mr Jenkins? There's 400 cans of pineapple chunks out there with my name on. Put your price gun down, come in and close the door, Eloise. Okay. Right, listen up. I'm only saying this once. In an effort to improve staff managerial relations, I'm conducting friendly chats with all Cooperative Society employees. <laughs> They're making you do this, aren't they? Yes. Personally, I see no reason why a supermarket shouldn't run perfectly well in an all-pervading atmosphere of fear and loathing. Well, it's worked for you so far, Mr Jenkins. That's what I said. But those smug graduate entry industrial relations consultants think they know everything. And I'm just expected to carry out orders from head office. Wasting your time and mine. Exactly. You'd rather beat us with sticks, wouldn't you? Don't tempt me. Sorry. Carry on. Right. According to our new personnel management scheme, I must communicate consideration, compassion and understanding. Treat each member of staff as if they were a member of my own family. But you murdered your family in a grisly orgy of bloodlust, didn't you, Mr Jenkins? I was acquitted on all charges. Besides, I never owned a chainsaw and nobody could prove that I did. You've gone a bit red, Mr Jenkins. <laughs> I'm not used to all this compassion. So, so, come on, Eloise. Have you got any problems? Anything you'd like to tell me in strictest confidence? Well, I'd like to, but not really. No dark secrets I should know about? No. You don't suffer from any tropical disease that could buy you from handling fresh fruit? No. You're not pregnant, menopausal, menstruating or having boyfriend trouble? No. You're not a disciple of Satan, wide-eyed werewolf or blood-sucking vampire? <laughs> what... What makes you ask that, Mr Jenkins? It's down here on the form. They're very thorough at the co-op. Very. Sorry, Fred, time's up, Eloise. But if you ever have a personal problem, please remember, my door is always open. You really care about your employees, don't you, Mr Jenkins? Of course I care, Eloise. If one of you lot got run over by a bus, it could be hours before the job centre sent a replacement. I know you don't want to admit it, but you're a decent bloke, Mr Jenkins. Creepy, but decent. Close the door behind you, Eloise. you, Philip. I really do. Debbie, have you seen me talk, Wrench? It's not in the kitchen. Oh, Eloise! What are you doing? Oh, nothing, nothing at all. What have you got behind your back? Oh, don't make me show you, please. You know it'll be worse for you if you don't. Promise you won't laugh? No. Show me. Here. Bloody hell, what is it? It's a lock of Philip Scorfield's hair. Which you've sellotaped onto a picture of him. Where his hair is? What were you doing with it when I came in? I like to smell it, for good luck. It's my most treasured possession. Do you want a sniff? Uh, no, thank you. He's my secret love. Well, I'd keep it secret if I were you. Don't you think he's dishy? No. How'd you get a lock of his hair? I waited for him outside the Joseph and his Technicolor Dreamcoat backstage door with loads of other fans. And when he came out, we mobbed him and I pulled this clump of hair out. That's quite a handful you got. Yeah. He had me arrested for assault and got a court injunction banning me from going within 200 yards of him. So I have to worship him from afar. Every clown has a silver lining. But now you know of my secret love, you'll have to tell me a secret about yourself. Let me think about it, Debbie. No. This is a really scary movie. Shut up, Wayne. But the evil Count Dracula's about to sink his fangs into that lovely young blonde girl dressed in a pure white wedding frock. Serves her right. Why? She's just an innocent virgin in love with a young Dennis Waterman. Exactly. Oh, no. The posse of peasant villagers are going to get there too late to save her from the Count's clutches. Good. You do get involved with the movies, don't you, Wayne? It's better than real life, Eloise. Yeah? She's doomed. I can't watch. Dracula will bite her and she'll become one of his minions. She'll join his band of evil undead. Look, he's used his creepy hypnotic stare. Yeah. She's melting into his arms. Yeah. He's about to feed on her virgin blood. Yes. His gleaming white fangs are about to rip into a swan like... Yes. Oh, no. Look, the sun's coming up. No. Yeah. <laughs> the light is burning. I am melting. Ah! 
That was brilliant. It was crap. It was a hammy hammer horror. Heaving cleavage, bad haircuts, 70s sideburns, and cardboard castles with walls that wobble at every waft of the Count's crumpling cloak. Frightened me. It was so unrealistic. Vampires just don't act like that. They do? OK, they are allergic to garlic and they might not be particularly fond of sunlight. But all that stuff about crosses and melting, it's pure fantasy. How do you know? Because I... I, I, I know. I've studied these things. Don't be daft, Eloise. Vampires don't even exist. And how do you know that? Well, if they do exist, I've never met one. How do you know you've never met one? If I'd met one, I'd know. I mean, they're not likely to wander up to you and say, Hello, Wayne, I'm a vampire. Suppose. They're a secret race. They can't tell people. Anyone could be a vampire. You might know lots of vampires at the co-op. Nah. In your own family. Nah. For all you know, I could be a vampire. Nah. You're just mucking about, Eloise. Yeah, I'm mucking about. But I had you worried, didn't I? Bloody hell, yeah. I thought you were going to suck my blood for a minute. Me too. Lucretia! Wake up! It's way past sunset! Oh, good evening, Eloise. <clears throat> Some nights you just don't want to leave your coffee. Lucretia, we've got to talk. What is it, little one? I don't think I can keep this thing secret for much longer. I've got to tell someone I'm a vampire. You'll do no such thing. I can't keep it inside any longer. You can and will. It's just so difficult. People don't understand me. If they only knew that... They must never know. Trust me, Louise. No mortal can keep our secret. But I'm sure that... No, but... The last time I trusted a mortar, I got tarred, feathered, and stopped with peach folks. Oh, Lucretia, I'm busting. This thing is growing inside me. If I don't tell someone soon, I'm going to explode. If you tell a mortar you are a vampire, I cannot help you. This is ancient vampire law. I won't need your help. This isn't the Dark Ages. Huh. Who would you tell? I don't know. Maybe my boyfriend, Wayne? Ha! Huh. Oh, my best girlfriend and flatmate, Debbie. Ha! <laughs> Mr Jenkins said I could tell him anything. Now I know you have taken leave of your marbles. You would trust this motley band of miserable mortals? They're my friends. <laughs> they are not worthy of your secret. They would betray you. They can't help themselves. It's their nature. No, you're living in the past, Lucretia. <laughs> this is the 20th century. And I've just got to tell someone. Eloise, before you do anything at all, you must promise me you will test these mortals. Test? How? Test their honesty. Trust each of them with a made-up story about yourself. If they can resist telling, then maybe they are worthy. But I think you'll find they're just a big bunch of blabbers. You're wrong, Lucretia, and I'm going to prove it. All I need is three juicy bits of gossip. Of course I can keep a secret, Eloise. You're the only person I can trust, Wayne. It's like this. I'm a kleptomaniac. I spent six months in prison for stealing. What? I'm a criminal, Wayne. Of course I can keep a secret, Eloise. You're the only person I can trust, Debbie. It's like this. I'm three months pregnant. I'm carrying a mystery love child and set on a lonely road to single motherhood, Debbie. Of course I can keep a secret, Eloise. You're the only person I can trust, Mr Jenkins. It's like this. I've been worshipping you from afar. I know that nothing can come of it, but I have to tell you that I love you with all my heart and soul, Mr Jenkins. Bloody hell, Eloise. Crikey, Eloise. Mr Jenkins. How did it happen, Eloise? What did you steal? Was it money? What was porridge like? How long were you banged up? You haven't nicked anything off me, have you? 
Who's the father, Eloise? Perhaps you should sit down. It must be Wayne. Have you told him? Are you going to get married? Can I be a godmother or a bridesmaid? How long have you felt like this, Eloise? You know it's impossible. There's my position at the co-op to consider. What about the age difference? What about Wayne? What about my wife? I don't want to talk about it any more. It's too painful. I just had to tell you, but you must promise to never tell anyone else. I promise. I promise. I promise. If anyone found out about this, I could be in such big trouble. Your secret's safe with me. Your secret's safe with me. Your secret's safe with me. Thank you, Wayne, Debbie, Mr Jenkins. I knew I could trust you. If that doesn't test their ability to keep a secret, nothing will. La 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 What a wonderful morning, Wayne! You've got a jaunty spring in your step, Mr Jenkins. There's no law against being happy, Wayne. La, la, if you la, say so, Mr la, Jenkins. La, la, la. Oh, Wayne! I've been looking for you everywhere. Oh, this meat counter's dead popular today. What can I do for you, Debbie? Oh, nothing. Just wanted to say hello. You can always say hello to me, Debbie. Oh, Mr Jenkins, I didn't recognise you with that smile on. A few more smiles and the world would be a happier place to live in. <laughs> Somebody's obviously giving him a bit of good news. Mm, who knows when a bit of good news could come our way, Wayne. Ta-ra! Normally it's just Eloise I can't understand, but today I think I've got a full house. <laughs> It's been a week, Lucretia, a whole week, and they've all kept my secrets. So you'd trust a mortal who can keep mum for seven days with a secret hidden for centuries? You wanted me to prove they could do it, and I have. Huh. I just have to choose which one to tell. Please, not so fast, Eloise. Your mortal friends have done very well, but you must be sure. If you're to trust them with your most precious secret, wait one more day. What difference will one day make? Exactly. One day, and then you can tell the whole world you are a vampire. Are you up to something? I just want what's best for you. Okay, I trust my friends. I know they'd never let me down. See you tonight. <laughs> That's right, Van Helsing. These mortals have not been truly tested. They obviously want to betray Eloise's trust. They just need a little encouragement to do so. A little temptation. Oh, thank you for the tea, Debbie. I'm sorry Eloise wasn't here. I, I thought she was at your house, actually. Never mind. It was nice to have a chat. Uh, maybe she's out burgling. Burgling? Uh, boogieing, you know, dancing in the disco. Yeah, probably. So, who to choose for my special secret? Well, there's Wayne. He worships me. I know he'd never tell. Oh, but I suppose Debbie is my best mate. And Mr Jenkins has professional integrity. Oh, it's so difficult to choose. It's only me. I've been waiting an hour. Where have you been? Could you help me with these bags? I've been busy shoplifting. I'm in shopping. Are you up to something? You're not the only one with secrets, Eloise. Oh. That's it. Knit one... Bell one. It's quite strange to see you in the co-op, Lucretia. But it's downright weird for you to be giving me a knitting lesson on my meat counter. But what a lovely woolly jumper you'll be able to make for Louise. Uh, you're right. It'll be a big surprise and a homemade token of my affection. Mind you don't drop a stitch. Mazdash, I've got a letter to deliver. Bye, Lucretia. Perhaps you'd care to tell me. <laughs> Why are you knitting on the meat counter, Wayne? Because it means so much more than just buying something from Marks and Spencers, Mr Jenkins. If I could argue with that, I would. <laughs> la, 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 la. Uh -huh. la, 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 Wayne. Aha. Uh -huh. Debbie? You're knitting? Yes. Then you know what I know. Do I? The patter of tiny feet. Size tens, actually, Debs. Oh, got to go. Jenkins is coming. See you later, Daddy. Is it just me or has everyone gone crackers in this supermarket? Sixty pence, please. Is that all? 
Yes, I am a lied eater. Lucretia! <laughs> Hello, Louise. I thought I saw you coming out of Mr Jenkins' office. What are you doing here? Shopping. <laughs> Three packets of extra strong mints. I'm on a diet. Actually, you do look a bit fatter. Thanks for noticing. He keeps bulging out a lot more than usual. And in strange and unusual shapes. Even vampires have to count the calories. La 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 la. Now, <laughs> now this letter looks a mite more interesting than the usual cooperative society bureaucracy. <laughs> My darling Mr Jenkins, if only I could declare our love for all the world to know, but I cannot hurt poor Wayne. He would be heartbroken if I left him. So our love will have to remain secret forever. Your unrequited Eloise. So, an upstart at the meet counter is preventing the supermarket manager from his rightful romantic relationship. Time for some compassionate manager staff interface, I think. When? Put that knitting down. You must give her up. I beg, I beg your pardon, Mr Jenkins. Eloise, you must fall on your sword to make way for the higher ranking officer. Are you feeling all right, Mr Jenkins? I've never felt better, Wayne, for I am loved and you are not. I don't know what you're rabbiting on about, Mr Jenkins. Eloise loves me. She told me so, and you are standing on our crazy paved path to happiness. I'm the manager of this supermarket, and you are only a lowly meat counter skivvy, so I demand that you stand down immediately. That's an order! By the way, keep your eyes peeled. There's been an unusually massive increase in shoplifting just lately. Oh, that power seems to have finally tipped him over the edge. Shoplifting. Don't suppose that could have anything to do with Eloise? Wayne! Wayne! Have you heard about the crime wave? Uh, what? Mr Jenkins says there's an epidemic of shoplifting going on, which is quite a coincidence because I'm also the victim of a vile and motiveless robbery. Oh! Someone has stolen my most treasured possession. I can't tell you what it is because that's a secret, but I can say it involves a human sample and a top celebrity, and it's been nicked! It might not have been Eloise. I didn't say anything about Eloise. Me neither. Then maybe she didn't do it. You think Eloise did it? I didn't say that. She would have. She would. She's done it before. Oh, bollocks. I didn't mean to say that. What are you talking about, Wayne? It's not her fault. She comes from a broken home. She was hardened by her years in the clink. Eloise in prison? She's like a wild animal revealing her true nature. Eloise has returned to her life of crime. You can take the girl out of Broadmoor, but you can't take Broadmoor out of the girl. Oh, she'll have to become a fugitive on the run from British justice, forced to live underground in the shadowy underworld. She can't live underground. Not in her state. What state? Well, surely she's told you by now. She's pregnant, Wayne, with your child. Pregnant? Crikey, the skeletons are tumbling out of the closet now. I thought you'd know about it, Dad. <laughs> Hang on a minute. Eloise and I have yet to consummate our relationship in the... Uh, Physical sense. So that's what Mr Jenkins was wittering about. What's that? He said Eloise had declared her love for him. You know what this means? No. Eloise is carrying the Jenkins love child. This is a staff announcement. Would Wayne and Debbie please come to my office immediately? Thank you. Crikey! Okay, spill the beans. I promised I wouldn't tell, but she's been in prison for stealing. She's an ardent criminal, Mr Jenkins. I thought we knew you see, otherwise I wouldn't have said anything, Mr Jenkins. So, she's been doing all this shoplifting. She needs help, Mr Jenkins. She needs the sack, Wayne. She nicked my most treasured possession. What's that? I can't say. But I'm moving out, I'm not sharing my flat with a robber. What a dilemma. To be loved by a highly attractive woman with a fiendish criminal mind. As far as I'm concerned, you can have her, Mr Jenkins. It's over between us. She's betrayed me and I can never forgive her. What are you hoping for, Mr Jenkins? A boy or a girl? Oh, what are you talking about, Debbie? Blimey, she hadn't even told the father! Congratulations, Mr Jenkins. You put Eloise in the pudding club. Staff announcement! Eloise, get in this bloody office! 
this now! Thank you. <laughs> it's not bloody fair. He's crying. Leave me alone. This is my bus shelter. He's crying. It's not fair. He's crying. You have to speak up. I'm a wee big deaf. Oh, just sod off. I hear that. So, why are you crying then? My life is shit. Is it like all equally shit? Or are some bits shittier than others? I've just lost my job, my flat, my best mate and two boyfriends, OK? Is that all? I thought it was something serious. <laughs> How did you do that then? It's a long story. I'm a dosa. I've got plenty of time. You're a tramp. Correct. A wino. There's no need to get personal. Are you homeless? Do you live on the streets? <clears throat> Look, this is my bus shelter. I ask the questions, OK? Now, how come you've lost your job, best mate? And... Two boyfriends, I know. It's so stupid. All I did was tell them I was a pregnant criminal in love with my boss. Are you? Don't be stupid. I was testing their trust. You see, I'm a... a I'm a... Oh, oh, I may as well tell you. I'm a vampire. Congratulations. There. I said it. Doesn't it bother you? I'm an alcoholic. Does that bother you? No. It's just... I've been keeping it a secret. Why? You should be proud. I, I am proud. People are going to find out eventually. Exactly. I shouldn't play games with people. I should have told them from the very beginning. No more secrets from now on. You can shout it from the streets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'm Eloise, by the way. Reg, very pleased to meet your acquaintance. Do you want to swig? What is it? It's 80 pence a litre. Uh, oh, thanks. Mm. <coughs> oh, lovely. Yeah. <clears throat> I can't believe you're so cool about this. You see, I only found out I was a vampire a couple of weeks ago. What? I said I only found out a few weeks ago. Uh, I bet it takes a wee bit of getting used to. Yeah. Yeah, yeah there's more to it than meets the eye, I can tell you. I bet. A whole new lifestyle. Yeah. Mm. It's been a terrible secret to keep. You shouldn't keep it a secret. It's a honour. Huh? You're right. It is an honour. <sighs> well, rain stopped. I'd better get going. Lots to do. Best of luck. Oh, yes! Yeah, yeah, yeah. And best of luck to you, Reg. Maybe I'll see you again someday with your bell and that. Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! What? I'm in the streets. I, I don't know what you're talking about. You! The town crier! Town crier? No! No, I didn't say I was a town crier. I said I was a van... Yeah, town crier. Yeah, I, I'm a town crier, Reg. And a bloody good one, I'm sure. Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! <laughs> Feel better now? Yeah. You always felt you were different. Yeah. You were right. Now you are. Nothing has really changed. Yes, it has. I can keep a secret now. But what am I going to do about Wayne and Debbie and Mr Jenkins? They think I'm a thieving pregnant nymphomaniac. I sorted that out for you. How? They were ready to lynch me. Yes. I know, I know. Mortals can't keep secrets. But they did have you to tempt them, and they only betrayed me with my best interests at heart. Who do you trust, Eloise? You, Lucretia. <laughs> so what did you tell them? How did you explain it all? That's my secret. <laughs> but I cleared everything up, and I got you a week's paid holiday. Oh, that's brilliant. Come on, tell me. How did you fix it? What did you tell them? Oh, it was nothing, really. 
I just told them you were going to spend a week in a lovely loony bin. You did what? <laughs> Don't worry. I'm sure they'll keep it a secret. Century Vampire was written by Joe Turner and starred Louise Lombard, Joanna Kanska, William Ivory, Jane Hazelgrove, Fine Time Fontaine, and Steve Hodson. And it was produced by Liz Amstead. Century Vampire by Joe Turner. Listen to my voice, and only my voice. Listen to its rhythms, the rise and fall of tone. You are feeling, oh, so sleepy, so tired. You are falling, falling, falling under my spell. Falling under your spell. That's right. You are as light as a feather, floating on air. Floating on air. I want you to clear your mind of everything but my voice. Empty your mind. Cast away all thoughts. My mind is completely empty. That was quick. <clears throat> Now listen carefully. When I snap my fingers, you will wake up and you will remember nothing of what has happened here. One, two, three. Wake up. Oh, Lucretia. And that is how to hypnotize someone. What? Like I just did to you. Did what? You were just under my hypnotic spell. I don't think so. Maybe it didn't work. It always works. I am a bloody expert hypnotist. I just woke you up, remember? I don't remember anything. Oh, flipping heck, I am such a stupid vampire. I told you to forget everything when I had you under, didn't I? I don't know, I can't remember. Oh, sorry, Louise. Come on, we'll have to start again. Look deep into my eyes and listen only to my voice. You are feeling... Sleepy, feeling sleepy. No, stop it, Eloise. The lesson is over. My mind is completely empty. I know, I know. Just wake up now. Wakey, wakey. Blimey, I was gone. That was amazing. I felt like I was only out for a few seconds. You were. The bell went. Tonight's lesson is over. We'll continue next time. Hypnotism is a difficult skill. But you'll find it an invaluable tool in your vampire life. Oh, I'm sure I'll get the hang of it soon. Mm -hmm. Can I have a go now? Stare into my eyes, Lucretia. No, stop it. Put your eyes away. Make sure you practice at home. But don't do it in front of a mirror. I once lost two years of my life that way. Well, where's the key? Quiet now, don't we, Debbie? Debbie, what are you doing up? It's five in the morning. I was waiting for you. Why? What is it? Sit down. I have the best news in the whole world. Mr Jenkins phoned. Oh, I wish that man would leave me alone. Not you, me. He has bestowed a great honour upon me. Oh, he's not tried it on with you. Oh, don't be daft. I wouldn't touch that squitty-eyed toad with a bog brush, no. He's asked me to organise the annual co-op staff outing. That's great. Congratulations. I'm so happy. I knew you'd appreciate the magnitude of this accolade. I just hope I'm up to the job. My only ambition is to repay the trust that has been placed in me. You sound like you just won an Oscar. It's only a scabby staff day out. It might be a scabby staff day out to you, but for me it's the culmination of years of hard work. 
trying to regain the trust and respect that vanished all so easily after the Brownie Nature Trail tragedy. I may regret this, but what is the Brownie Nature Trail tragedy? I don't want to talk about it. It's too painful. It'll be more painful if I pull out your fingernails with a pair of pliers. Um, picture the scene. Twenty-five brownies trooping through the forest with me as their proud leader. And then it's lunchtime. Twenty-five little brownie tummies all grumbling away amid the foliage. Can we get to the tragedy? Everyone said my wild mushroom soup was much better than the stuffing cans. Get on with it! I didn't know what sort of mushrooms they were. I'd lent my ladybird book of forest fungi to brown owl. Oh, this sounds better. It was awful! Twenty-five brownies high on magic mushrooms. <laughs> what happened? We had a collective hallucination that we were a crack squad of British paratroopers retaking the Falkland Isles from the evil Arges. I was the hero of Goose Green, but Brown Owl was arrested for corrupting miners and conducting satanic rituals in an English heritage wildlife trail. That's tragic, Debbie. So you see... This opportunity to mastermind the annual co-op staff outing is my big chance to make amends for that fateful day. <laughs> What's going on here, Debbie? Oh, Mr Jenkins, you're so good at creeping up on me. Sometimes I think you just appear out of thin air. It's a genetic gift, actually, Debbie. My family are descended from the great Apache Indian tracker, Silent Foot. You don't look like a Red Indian, Mr Jenkins. I know. The white man stole our lands and corrupted us with his fire water. And before long, our proud tribe were reduced to wearing three-piece suits and running provincial grocery retail outlets. You're quite a dark horse, Mr Jenkins. Leaving aside the ethnic origins of the Jenkins family for a moment, Debbie, what are you doing? I'm putting up this notice, alerting all co-op employees to my plans for the annual staff outing. I see. I've left space for them to sign up for the trip. I don't want to pour cold water on your enthusiasm, Debbie, but if you remember, I tried the same plan last year and ended up going to see Shirley Bassey all by myself. With all due respect, Mr Jenkins, the Tiger Bay songstress is not likely to stir the hearts of the spotty adolescent grunge fans you employ in this supermarket. So where are you taking us this year? Pony trekking. You can sign up now. Thank you, but no. I don't think it's healthy to get too intimate with animals. Do it with you at the other end of the sofa. Come closer, Wayne. Righty-o. This is nice. Just look into my eyes and concentrate. You've got lovely eyes. Shut up, this is serious. Sorry. And stop blinking. Well, I keep thinking you're going to jab me in the eye with your nose. I'll jab you somewhere a lot more painful with my knee if you don't shut it. All right. I'm ready. Have a go. Now, just relax. Empty your mind... Look into my eyes and listen to my voice. You are floating, floating, light as a feather. You are feeling sleepy, very sleepy. Your eyes are heavy. Heavy eyes. Close your eyes. You are falling into a deep sleep. Deep sleep. You are now in a deep, hypnotic trance. You will listen to my voice and do everything I say. Mm. It's worked. Listen to my voice, Wayne. You are to obey my every command. Lift your left arm. Mm. Listen to my voice. You will lift your left arm. Lift your right arm, then. Lift any arm. Wayne! <laughs> Wayne! Oh, oh, what? Oh, Eloise, crikey, I, I was out. Hey, that was brilliant. You were asleep. It's the idea, isn't it? No, I was busy hypnotising and you just dropped off. I was having a lovely dream. I'll never get the hang of this bloody hypnotism. I don't know why it doesn't work on you. You're a perfect subject. Low intelligence and high gullibility. Can I have a go? What? Can I have a go at hypnotising you? No. Go on. It's impossible to hypnotise someone more intelligent than you. Well, you never know. I might have the gift. I can outstare the cat. There's no chance it'll work. Look into my eyes. You're not even doing it right. You've got to have a fixed stare. You keep blinking. Look, your eyelids are 
batting up and down in a crazy rhythm, fluttering, blinking, blinking. You blinking. are in my power. I am in your power. Bloody hell, she's under. Uh, you will do everything I tell you. I will do everything you tell me. I am the master, and you are my servant. You are my master, and I am your servant. Hey, this is great.、Uh, you will sing "Bar Bar Black Sheep" every time I mention your name. I will sing "Bar Bar Black Sheep" every time. Eloise. Bar Bar Black Sheep, have you any wool? <laughs> Brilliant. What shall I do with you now?、Uh, perhaps you'd like to、uh, snuggle up to me a bit on the sofa. Certainly, master. <laughs> Nice and cosy. <clears throat>、uh, ask me to give you a cuddle. Give me a cuddle, master. Certainly, Eloise. Ba ba black sheep, have you any wool? It don't half make a change to see you all soft and vulnerable and pliant in my arms, Eloise. Ba ba black sheep, have you any wool? I can see another side to your personality, and I think I like it. Will you、uh, really do anything I ask? Anything at all, master. <sighs> well, um. It's very hot in here. Maybe you'd like to、um, take your clothes off. Very well, master. Oh, crikey! Your wish is my command. Oh no, no, no! Stop, Eloise. Ah, ba black sheep, have you any wool? Yes, master. I can't take advantage of you like this. It wouldn't be fair. Yes, master. On the other hand, I may never get another opportunity like this. No, master. So get your togs off and let's get sweaty. Yes, master. Oh, that's right. You help me get undressed. Oh, undo my collar. Careful with my top button. You'll pull it off. There's no need to be rough. Yes, master. You're pressing on my neck. I can't breathe. That's choking me, Eloise. Ba ba black sheep, have you any wool? You can stop that now. Could you stop choking me, please, Eloise? You deserve a good throttling. You're awake, and you're in big trouble. I was only joking. Stop strangling me, please. I'm only joking too. Your jokes, Eloise. <laughs> Eloise, did you do this? Do what? My staff outing notice. Look, what's the problem? It's full of signatures. Everyone wants to go on your trip. That's because somebody has changed my original notice. Give it back. Sign up for this year's special co-op staff day organised by Debbie. A whole day slobbed out in front of the telly. It's a very popular idea. I wanted to go pony trekking. You're the only one. Everyone else wants to slob out in front of the telly. You changed it, didn't you? Yeah, all right. Don't get your knickers in a twist. I'm sorry, but nobody wants to go on your silly pony trekking trip. I know that. Thank you. I've got a new plan. Oh yeah. We're all being too selfish. This special day should be about helping others. I don't like the sound of this. I've been on too many staff outings that are just a lame excuse for everyone to get completely drunk and snog each other. That's what they're for. Not this year. Here's my new notice. Sign up for this year's co-op staff outing organised by Debbie if you would like to visit the National Blood Transfusion Service and give blood for the benefit of others. What do you think? I was hoping for Alton Towers. <laughs> What do you think of this one? I don't know. Once you've seen one black velvet cape, you've seen them all, and I've seen fifty-four tonight. What is the point of this fashion show, Lucretia? I'm trying to choose the perfect outfit for my latest brilliant scheme. And what is your latest brilliant scheme? Vampograms. Vampograms. Sometimes I'm so brilliant, I amaze myself. What exactly is a vampogram? Imagine you're having an office party, or a birthday party, or a stag night, or twenty-first, or a Christmas. I get the picture. You want to make a big party splash and embarrass a colleague or friend. Yeah. So you phone up Lucretia's surprise vampogram service, and for a small fee. I turn up at the party in my best cape, do a little poem, flap about a bit, and drink the blood of the victim. <laughs> Brilliant! Well, it's just harmless fun, I suppose. Of course, I don't tell them on the phone that I am going to suck the blood. That's the surprise. I'm sure it'll be a winner. 
I've already got a grant from the Enterprise Allowance Scheme. I'm going to be a small businesswoman of the year. <laughs> well, pity you can't give Debbie a few pointers on organising a good night out. Perhaps I can, for a small consultation fee. She set her heart on a staff out into the blood bank. We're all going to give blood for the benefit of others. Now, does that sound like a good knees up to you? Louise, you must not go. You can't give blood. Vampires need every drop. We can't spare even a little bit. Well, it's only a pint. A pint? Bloody hell, that's very nearly an armful. Well, what would happen if I gave blood? I don't want to be over dramatic, but your flesh would melt off your bones into a pool of molten goo which would then spontaneously combust and leave you as a pile of smoking ashes. Are you sure? You want to check it out? You must get out of it. On no account, you can let somebody take even one copper cell of your blood. You must give Debbie a brilliant but believable excuse. Let me get this right, Eloise. You can't sign up for my blood donor outing because you've got a cough. <coughs> but you're the only co-op employee who hasn't signed up. Sorry, Debbie. It's a very chesty cough. All your cynicism and poo-pooing have rebounded upon you, Eloise. My blood donor plan is a popular success and you've been struck down with a chesty cough. <coughs> I'm completely chastened. I'm heartbroken that I'll not be able to share in your glorious hour, Debbie. You can. How? That cough won't stop you giving blood. Your pint will be welcomed with open arms. Here's a pen. Sign up and I'll have a full house. I, I, I don't know, Debbie. I... I might have a contagious virus that I could pass on. Maybe I should have a check-up first. Don't be silly. Sign up. But I'm frightened of needles. Well, so am I. We'll fight the fear together. Uh, I don't think I'm suitable. I'm more of a receiver than a giver. I'm beginning to think you're trying to worm your way out of this, Eloise. Nothing could be further from the truth. Then sign up. Can't. Why not? I'm a Jehovah's Witness. Yes, that's it. Uh, I can't give blood. It's against my religion. Since when have you been a Jehovah's Witness? I'm a lapsed Jehovah's Witness. Well, if you're lapsed, then it doesn't matter. Oh, I'm not completely lapsed, just a, a little bit lapsed. But I'm completely unlapsed on the blood question. Or is it delapsed or collapsed? You're just making up excuses, Eloise. Are you trying to spoil my big day? No! You're the only party pooper in the whole co-op. And I know you have a funny way of showing it, but I thought you were my friend. I am! I just... Oh, leave me alone! I'm not talking to you. It's not unusual to be loved by anyone. Hello, Wayne. Oh, uh, Eloise. Want to come round to the flat tonight and have another go at hypnotising me? I can't. What? I can't. I can't understand what you're saying unless you open your mouth when you speak, Wayne. I shouldn't even be talking to you, Eloise. What? We're sending you to Coventry. Well, it's not all ten towers, but it's better than the blood bank trip. It's not funny. How come you won't sign up for Debbie's day out? I just don't fancy it, OK? Don't you care about small children involved in car crashes, lying comatose in hospitals, bleeding to death? No. Hello, Wayne. Oh, uh, hello, Debbie. Look, Debbie, I think your blood bank trip is a great idea. I'm, I'm really pleased everyone has signed up, but it's just not my scene. Wayne? Yes, Debbie? Would you tell Eloise that I am not speaking to her? I would if I could, Debbie, but as you well know, I am also not speaking to her. Oh, this is stupid. Chat, 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 chat. I can hear chatting. What's going on here? Mr Jenkins, at last, the voice of sanity. Surely you've not signed up for Debbie's blood bank trip. Oh, Debbie, would you tell Eloise that I heartily approve of your blood bank scheme? And would you also inform her that I am not speaking to her? Oh, not you as well. Far be it for me to disobey a court command, Mr Jenkins, but I'm not speaking to her either. I understand completely, Debbie. Perhaps Wayne could relay your message and also inform her that she is no longer my best friend. Wayne, don't listen to her. Debbie just says... That Wayne! She's, I, I'm afraid I cannot convey your message, Debbie, uh, for I am also not speaking to Eloise. If you think this is bothering me, you're sadly mistaken. At last, I can come to work and not have to listen to any of your drivel. Oh. <laughs> Lucretia, what are you doing behind that screen? I want to make a big entrance. Why? It's my dress rehearsal. I want your opinion. I want to talk. In a minute. First, sit down and pretend you're a birthday boy bank clerk about to be embarrassed by his best mates. All right. Cue music. Aha! Clap, clap, clap around the room a bit. 
And now the call. Greetings, party people. From Transylvania I have come to bring the birthday boy lots of fun. Who is this in a big black cape? An evil spirit or a jolly jape? Dracula's sister is who I am. Come to give you a vampire gram. So, pack her up for a birthday kiss. Close your eyes and make a wish. Maybe your cheek I will give a pep. Oh, take a big bite from your juicy neck. <laughs> what do you think? Be honest. Very good, very moving. <laughs> do you really think so? I think the script needs a bit of work. No, no, it's perfect. Um, what about my performance? Makes Meryl Street look like a block of wood. Eloise, what's the matter? It's Debbie's day out at the blood bank. Haven't you sorted that out yet? I told them I wouldn't go and they've sent me to Coventry. Where is this Coventry? <sighs> my friends won't talk to me. Is this a bad thing? Yeah. I'm sick of being snobbed. Come on, Eloise. Snap out of it. You are a resourceful vampire. I'm sure you can sort out this little problem. Yeah. What am I thinking about? It's only Debbie. That's my girl. I'll sign up for the blood bank straight away. Blimey, if I can't outwit Debbie, I deserve to end up as a pile of smoking ashes. I'm bound to come up with a brilliant and ingenious plan before I get anywhere near a hospital needle. Dr. Griffiths to cubicle nine, please. Oh, bloody hell. You look a bit off colour, Eloise. She's just nervous. She can speak for herself. I'm so glad you signed up for my blood bank trip. Yeah, yeah. I wonder who'll get my blood. I hope he's a nice bloke. It could be anyone, Wayne, a man or a woman. Crikey, Eloise. Just think, I've got unisex blood. Donor Jenkins, cubicle four, please. Looks like your number's come up, Mr Jenkins. Are you nervous, Mr Jenkins? <laughs> Not at all, Debbie. I've never been afraid of pain. In fact, sometimes I think it can be quite a pleasant experience. Like when you accidentally get your thumb trapped in a vice and then accidentally keep tightening it up. Tighter and tighter, accidentally squeezing it until it swells bright red and throbs a tingly sort of... Donna Jenkins, we're waiting. I'd better get going then. Best of luck, Mr Jenkins. It is a far, far better thing I'm doing now than I've ever done before. Donna Jenkins, will you get in this cubicle? I'm coming, I'm coming. One down, three to go. Oh, I'm, I'm not sure this is such a good idea. I shouldn't really be here. You've come this far. It'd be a shame to back out now. We'll help you through it, Eloise. No! What was that? What was what? I heard a scream. Oh, you're just a bit tense. That's quite common. It's your first time. Yeah, maybe my mind is playing tricks on me. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I'm going round the twist. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I should go home. No. no, it's probably the waiting that's got to you. Don't worry. One little prick and it'll soon be over. Donor Wayne to cubicle three, please. Donor Wayne to cubicle three. Well, I've had the call, girls. Best of luck, Wayne. I may be gone for some time. <laughs> just the two of us now. Yeah. Look, Debbie, I've got to go. There's no way I can give blood. Why not, Eloise? I don't know, but I'll think of a good reason soon. I'll just uh, skip off now and I'll tell you why tomorrow. Do you want to hold my hand? Yeah, but what I'd really like to do is get out of here. Actually, y you're squeezing it a bit tight, Eloise. You see, if I give blood, uh, something terrible is going to happen. I, you're hurting me. Can you let go, please? Oh, uh, oh, God, that was awful. Mr Jenkins, what happened? Oh, phew! I think you've broken my hand bone. Oh, you should see the size of the needles, Eloise. They're huge. They just ram it in. I think those nurses like to give pain. No! And the blood gushes out, pumping it out of you. I'm sure they took more than a pint. Maybe a litre, maybe a quart. Oh, take no notice, Eloise. He's just having yum. Go and get your tea and biscuits, Mr Jenkins. All right. Save a Garibaldi for me. Donors Debbie and Eloise to cubicle four, please. Debbie and Eloise to cubicle four. Oh, they're going to do us together. Isn't that nice? We're going to be blood sisters. Oh. <laughs>
Not long to wait now. <sighs> this is it then? Yeah. Any minute we'll hear the clippity clop of the nurse's sensible shoed footsteps on the antiseptically clean lino. Oh. With one swish of the curtain screen, she'll be here with her big fat needle oh. ready to take our precious samples. Oh, I've got to get out of here. Stop fretting. Empty your mind and just think of nice things, like sitting on a beach or ponies or lovely floating clouds. That's it. What? I should have thought of it before. Debbie! What? Look deep into my eyes. Hey? Stare into my eyes and listen to my voice. If you think it'll help. You are feeling very sleepy. You are floating, floating light as a feather. Close your eyes. You are falling into a deep sleep. A deep, deep sleep. A deep, deep sleep. No, I'm wide awake, but I'm feeling much more relaxed, thank you. Oh, no. I wonder what's taking so long. Debbie, this is getting serious. I know, it's a serious business. We're talking a matter of life and death. If I give blood, the flesh will melt off my bones and then burn up till I'm nothing but a pile of smoking ashes. You shouldn't <gasps> listen to Mr Jenkins' stories. I was hoping to get out of here by sheer cunning, but I'm going to have to resort to physical violence and smack you in the chops. It's very odd that you're so squeamish about this. You're usually so tough. But you see, if I give blood, I'm a goner. But you can never tell. Look at me. Calm, collected. Most people would think I'm the kind of person who'd faint at the first sign of... What's in that pouch thing over there? Oh, it's just a bag of blood. Blood? Oh. Oh. Debbie! Debbie! Ha! <laughs> what a stroke of luck. She's fainted. I've got to get out of here before... Oh, no. That's the clippity-clop of the nurse's footsteps on the antiseptic line, or there's no way out. Oh, she'll have her big fat needle with her. Maybe I can hide. Oh, where can I hide in a five-foot square cubicle? What am I going to do? Any second now, that curtain will swish open and my life will be over. No, please. Ah! Get up off the floor, Eloise. You'll miss my performance. Lucretia, cue music. From Transylvania I have come. My student's looking very glum. She doesn't have a brilliant plan to save her from the frying pan. Baby fainted with a sickening thud, and the donor nurse can smell her blood. Poor Eloise, she's in the mire. I wonder, who is her favorite vampire? Lucretia has come to rescue you. Let's bugger off. Say totally do. Am I glad to see you, but let's leave the poetry and make our getaway, please. We must escape before things get worse. The clippity clop of the blood down in us. Twentieth Century Vampire was written by Joe Turner. It starred Louise Lombard, Joanna Kanska, William Ivory, Jane Hazelgrove, and Fine Time Fontaine. And it was produced by Liz Anstey. I didn't recognise you in that nurse's uniform. Does it suit me? What do you think? I like the starred tunic and the black stockings, but I feel a bit silly with a paper hat on my head. No, it's definitely you. Mm, maybe I could get a job in the blood bank. Nurse Lucretia. <laughs> it's such a shame to think of all that lovely blood being wasted on mortals. Stop licking your lips, Lucretia. The blood transfusion service do a marvellous job, but they always need more donors. Remember... Every pint donated could save a life. Call them soon. It doesn't hurt, and it only takes a few minutes. Are you doing a bloody advert? Yes. Twentieth Century Vampire by Joe Turner. That's enough. Very good, Eloise. Let's take a break. Is my fencing improving, Lucretia? I don't know, Eloise. I'm completely shagged out. Oh, me too. Glass of water. Oh, thank you. Oh, that's better. 
I don't know where all my energy has gone. When did we last drink blood, Eloise? Uh, I don't know. Was it that pair of Boy Scouts during Boba Job Week? <laughs> I love children. Fun-sized mortals. Two bites big. <laughs> and delivered to your home. Meals on BMX wheels. <laughs> <laughs> but that was ages ago. Surely we fed more recently. Uh, oh, I know. It was a few weeks back. During the council elections, remember? Oh, yes. So thoughtful of political parties to send canvases to our door. Yeah. I fed off the Tory and you had the Liberal Democrat. Don't remind me. That was the worst blood I've tasted in years. <laughs> Mum was all right. Your palate is still young and uneducated. I am a connoisseur. You just can't get decent blood these days, Eloise. I wish mortals would take better care of themselves. They spoil so easily. What do you mean? They are like battery chickens. They stuff themselves with junk food full of additives and preservatives and chemicals, then slope out in front of the telly and get fat. It all filters through to the blood. That is so selfish. I remember when rough peasant blood tasted like caviar. These days, even the best blood tastes like bloody pot noodles. What about royal blood? Have you ever had any blue blood? Ah, oh, aristocracy. Bread for taste and refinement. Oh, I'd love to feed off a royal. If you tasted Fergie, you'd soon change your mind. You soap the Duchess of York? Only for a bet. Crikey! Once upon a time, Windsor blood was a rare delicacy. But these days, all the holidays and free lunches have diluted the line. You might as well suck Jack Duckworth. <laughs> I wish I'd had the chance to suck some vintage blood. We have been very lazy vampires, Eloise, waiting for our dinner to knock on the door. Our political feast was over three weeks ago, and it's that time of the month again. Feeding time. You're right. I'm really feeling quite peckish. But this month, we must go out and catch our own food. The hunt is on. There must be some new blood in this town. Mm, and I think I know where to find it. Keep climbing. Not much higher. The next window, I think. Lucretia? What? Will you tell me why we're shinning up this drain pipe outside the county hospital records department in the middle of the night? You will see. Lucretia, mind that section of drain pipe. It don't look safe. Don't worry. My cat-like balance means that I never fall. But it's coming away from the bricks! Lucretia! Hey, I'm falling! Oh. Oh, thanks for catching me, Louise. My pleasure. What happened to your cat-like balance? I'm obviously getting weaker. We must feed soon. Come on. It's that window up there. You want to go on? You bet your cotton socks I do. Locked, Lucretia. We'd better climb down. It's open now. You just smashed that window. Yes. That's council property. Don't be such a scaredy cat, Louise. I've got the smell of blood in my nostrils. Come on, climb in. You definitely need feeding soon, Lucretia. Stop moaning and stand by the door. What for? You keep a lookout while I start the detective work. I love the thrill of the chase. What are you doing in that filing cabinet? Don't look at me. Keep your eyes peeled for the night watchman. I still don't get the point of this raid. Where well, better to find fresh blood than the hospital records? If there is any new blood in the town, I'll find it in here. Isn't this just the teeny weeniest bit illegal, Lucretia? Oh, you're so boring, Eloise. Drinking that Conservative Party candidate has addled your brains. Next thing, you'll be selling your motorbike and buying a Volvo. I just don't want to spend the rest of my life in prison. No, that looks interesting. I'm too young to start slopping out. Very interesting. Lucretia! I think I can hear someone coming! Bingo! What? We'd better get going, then. Have you found something? No! Nothing of interest. I thought you'd said we'd find new blood. I was wrong. So all this has been for nothing? Yes. Bad idea. 
stupid Lucretia the Vampire Twit. Come on, let's go. Hello, Eloise. It's me, Wayne, your boyfriend. You don't need to remind me, Wayne. I know who you are. I'm just so happy and proud to be your boyfriend, Eloise. I, I sometimes wake up in the morning and think it might all be a dream. I have to pinch myself to check it's really real. Do us a favour, Wayne. Stop pinching yourself. Your cheeks are red and blotchy enough as it is. OK, good thinking. Give the scabs a chance to heal. What do you want, Wayne? Do you want to go out bowling tomorrow? There's a gang going. Will it involve anything physical? Well, just chucking a heavy ball at a load of pins. But we could maybe get to physical later. I feel a bit weak at the moment. You do look a bit peaky. I hope you're not sickening for something. Have you got a temperature? No, it's just... Because your health is very important, Eloise. I know. I care about you. I don't want to see you get poorly. It's that time of the month, Wayne. Oh, righty I'll say no more. What do you mean, say no more? Uh, women's troubles. Women's troubles? None of my business. I thought, as my boyfriend, you'd be interested in my health and well-being. Don't you want to talk about it? No, thank you. But I want to share it with you. Well, there's no need, Eloise. Are you embarrassed, Wayne? Uh, yes. <laughs> Don't you want to know about my womanly cycles? Not really. Please don't make me. I thought you'd be the sensitive sort of man who'd offer to run to the shop for a box of tampons. Oh, Help! Menstruation is a natural thing, Wayne. Chat, chat, chat. I can hear chatting. Oh, Mr Jenkins, how nice to see you. Nice. No, Wayne, not nice. For I am here to bollock you. I know, but I deserve it. I shouldn't have been chatting. It's a fair cop, Mr Jenkins. So what were you chatting about, Wayne? Oh, nothing. Nothing at all. Just my usual drivel. We were discussing menstruation, Mr oh. Jenkins. And Wayne was just offering to pop out and buy me some tampons. Oh. Well, I don't know why we stock a wide range of sanitary protection in this store. Oh. Eloise, catch him. He's going to faint. Missed. <laughs> Now, where is that delicious little man? And if I catch you reading Cosmopolitan on checkout four one more time, you'll be for the high jump, my girl. There he is. Sorry, Mr Jenkins, I won't do it again. I should hope not. The last thing our customers want is a dose of radical feminism with their fruit and veg. Look out, my trolley's out of control. Ah! Oh, my legs. So sorry. I couldn't find the brakes. That's all right. I can still walk. Just... You must be Mr. Jenkins. Must I? I'm Lucretia. Eloise is my niece. She speaks often of you. Eloise talks about me. Nothing good, I bet. She paints a trembling picture of a ruthless supermarket manager ruling the roost with a rod of iron. Oh, yes. That's me. I wonder... Could you help a lost shopper, Mr. Jenkins? If it's in my power, I'll do it. Oysters? Yes. Do you have any? Yes, in tins. Where are they? Aisle three, stand four, top shelf. You are truly the master of your supermarket, Mr. Jenkins. Oh, I do what I can. It's so attractive to see a man in total control of his environment. I don't suppose... You would be interested in sharing a tin of oysters with uh, Eloise's Transylvanian auntie? Oh, that's a very tempting offer. Then give in to temptation, Mr. Jenkins. Tonight, eight o'clock, my place. I'll keep the candles burning for you. You're a persuasive woman, Lucretia. <laughs> By the way, what is your first name? It's, uh, Mr. As in Mr. Mr. Jenkins? Yes, stupid, isn't it? It's a curse to have parents with a sense of humour. <laughs> it suits you? Oh, you think so? Until tonight, Mr. Oh, blimey! <laughs> Pass me the other onion. Everything must be perfect for this meal. Since when have you been interested in Mr Jenkins? Who knows where love's arrows will land? Love's arrows? <laughs> you must be feeling weak. Either your mind is going or you're up to something, Lucretia. You have Wayne for a boyfriend. Why can't I have Mr Jenkins? 
Why? I'll tell you why. Because he's slimy and creepy and sort of weird. Mm, you're describing my ideal man. I wouldn't be surprised if he was a bit kinky. Lucky me. Look, Eloise, tonight's lesson is cancelled. I want you to stay away from my castle. Mr. Jenkins and I are going to have a romantic candlelit dinner. And I don't want you poking your nosy parker in and spoiling everything. What's it worth? Five pounds. Ten. Done. Now, bugger off. Debbie, can I have a word? Oh, Mr. Jenkins, you've bought flowers. Uh, uh, yes. Do you think they're nice? It's a beautiful bouquet. I'm touched. You're saying it with flowers, aren't you? I hope so. You're saying, I'm sorry for telling you off, Debbie. Here's a bunch of flowers to show you what a valued member of staff you are. Apology accepted. Thank you, Mr Jenkins. Wrong, Debbie. Oh! These flowers are saying thank you for the dinner invitation, Lucretia. You are indeed a fascinating woman. Not in a language I understand, they're not. Are you really having dinner with Lucretia? Yes. Eloise's auntie Lucretia? Yes. Tall, beautiful, charismatic Lucretia? Yes. You? Yes. With her? Yes. <laughs> what are you laughing at, Debbie? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Mr Jenkins. Will you tell me what is so funny about me having a date with Lucretia? <laughs> Debbie, stop it! I, can, I can't! Stop laughing! That's a corp order! It's not funny! <laughs> It was very thoughtful of you to bring wine. The Welsh vineyards are turning out some tasty plonk. And at such reasonable prices. One eighty-five or two bottles for three quid. Tell me about yourself, Mr Jenkins. I come from a long line of undertakers. It's to my eternal shame that I didn't go into the family firm. Why didn't you? I was a teenage rebel, Lucretia. I can believe that. I was seduced by the lure of the retail market, the heady thrill of aisles and checkout tills, the sheer beauty of all your grocery needs under one roof. I could love a man with the guts to chase his dream. May I confide in you, Lucretia? Of course. I still keep a bottle of embalming fluid on my bedside table. Oh, you really know how to push a girl's buttons, Mr. Jenkins. You like embalming fluid? Such an aphrodisiac aroma. At last, a woman who understands me. Hmm. She must be up to something. I think it's sweet. We could go out as a foursome. We could go bowling. Shut up, Wayne. What do you think of Mr. Jenkins going out with Lucretia, Debbie? <laughs> I agree, it's laughable. Everybody deserves their chance of happiness. It's creepy. Can you imagine them doing it? Oh, it's like imagining your parents doing it. No, it's worse. Oh, it's disgusting. Come on, Wayne, I'm going over there. Oh, okie dokie. I'm going for a laugh. Do you want to come, Debbie? Uh, come where? To find out what's going on with Mr Jenkins and Lucretia. <laughs> Come on, Wayne, we've got a party to poop. <laughs> There's no need to throw dirty plates. I can buy more. It's easier than washing up. Watch it. Thank you for spoiling my party, Eloise. Saved it more like. Your Wayne driveling on about continental meat product is not my idea of riveting conversation. <laughs> What about your Mr Jenkins whining away about co-op bureaucracy and strategic impulse by display unit? Well, there's the washing up done. Is it safe to come out now? You spoiled my one chance at a lasting and meaningful relationship. <laughs> you want Jenkins for a lasting and meaningful relationship? Of course I do. A vampire gets lonely. A vampire has needs. All you want from Jenkins is his blood. You are so crude and cynical, Eloise. What about friendship, conversation, companionship? What about his medical file? Where did you get that? It was hidden under the pillow in your coffin. You! 
were snooping in my coffin. You made this from the hospital, didn't you? You sneaky vamp. I should put you across my knee and give you a good damn spanking. So what's the story, Lucretia? What's going on? Look in the file. What? Tonsillectomy? Oh, don't be a dipstick. Look at the blood group. A.H. rhesus positive. Mr. Jenkins has Bombay blood. The manager of our local co-op has the rarest blood group on the planet. There's only two people with Bombay blood in the whole world. Sanji, the Bombay bus conductor, and Severiano, the Spanish fireman. And now, Jenkins, the co-op supermarket manager. Have you ever tasted Bombay blood? In my dreams. Once we discovered Sanji, the Bombay bus company was swarming with vampires, all wanting a little taste. The poor man was on his last legs, so the vampire society was forced to make him an endangered species and slap a preservation order on him. Same story with Sevi. No vampire has tasted Bombay blood for years. Wow! But, Lucretia... She'll drink her fill very soon. Hang on a minute. He's my boss. I want to taste Bombay blood. This might be my only chance. Let me teach you one of the main tenets of ancient vampire law, Eloise. We don't share. We won't need to share if I get to him first. But that won't happen because he's mine. I discovered him. I'm going to eat him. So... It's battle for the blood of Jenkins. I warn you, Eloise. This is a dangerous game. We are both weak and need a feed very soon. Want to chicken out? No way. I want his blood. Very well. I've already informed the Vampire Society of Jenkins' Bombay blood, so we have 24 hours before they slap a preservation order on him. Fine by me. One of us will get to taste the rarest blood in the world. For the other... It could be dust. So be it. May the best vampire win. Sorry for barging in on you last night, Mr Jenkins. I'm so pleased you and Lucretia are dating. Oh, oh, she's an incredible woman, Eloise. You will be gentle with her, Mr Jenkins. She's not been lucky in love. Really? I don't think her previous husbands really understood her. She's been married before? Only seven times. Seven? Of course, some of them didn't last very long. Barely got through the honeymoon. Where are these husbands now? Heaven or hell, who can say? They're dead. Of course, Lucretia is a very spiritual woman. She doesn't approve of divorce. But perhaps she just wants you for a lover. Did you see Fatal Attraction, Mr Jenkins? Fatal Attraction? I just wondered if it was any good. Oh, I just remembered. Can I volunteer for tonight's all-night stock-taking? What? I thought we could do it together. Just the two of us. Are you feeling all right, Eloise? I know. Don't tell anyone. It would ruin my credibility. See you tonight, Mr Jenkins. Fatal attraction. Bloody hell. You're in over your head here, Jenkins. Come on. Pull yourself together. Aha, uh -huh, Mr Jenkins. Oh. At last I tracked you down. Oh, Lucretia, you crept up on me. I must be sickening for something. I was wondering, could you help me? I'll try, Lucretia. I'm a shopper in distress. I can't find what I'm looking for. What are you looking for? A good man. I thought you'd had enough good men. What do you mean, mister? I mean your seven husbands. Seven husbands? Have you been talking to Eloise by any chance? We had a chat. I thought so, the little minx. Oh, dear. I suddenly feel very weak. I'm falling. Catch me, Mr Jenkins. No. Oh, I've got you. What, what, what is it? I'm so sorry. I have these turns, you see. It's a very rare medical condition. Tropical. Really? Oh, it's not contagious. I just need a little rest. And a drink. I'll take you to my office. Is it private? Yes. Out of sight of the other shoppers? Yes. Perfect. Let's go there quickly. Then I'll be able to 
quend this thirst. This way. Here we are. You sit down and have a rest. You're so kind, but I need to drink. Come here. I'll fetch you a glass of water. Blast, never mind. He'll be back. I'm so close to the Bombay blood, I can smell it seeping through his pores. I'll pretend to be asleep when he comes back. I shall have him. Oh, I'm tingling with excitement. Uh -huh. Here he comes. I'm back, Lucretia, with a glass of water. I think she's passed out. Better give her a sip of water. Oh, I'm so thirsty. Perhaps she's delirious. Come closer. Closer. At last you're mine, Mr. Jenkins. Hello, Lucretia. Ah, Louise! She's brought you a drink. Mr. Jenkins told me how thirsty you were, so I offered to bring you a nice, cool glass of water. Thanks, a bloody bunch. Eighty-seven cans of low-sugar baked beans. Eighty-seven. Seventy-four cans of low-fat baked beans. Seventy-four. Fifty-eight cans of low-salt baked beans. Fifty-eight. And two hundred and ninety-three cans of high-fibre, high-sugar, high-salt, full-fat baked beans. Two hundred and ninety-three. Now on to spaghetti hoops. Can we take a break for a minute, Mr Jenkins? Ah, am I going too fast for you, Heloise? <laughs> Ow! What's the matter? Oh, I think I've got something in my eye. Perhaps you should run it under the tap. Can you look for me? I can't see anything. Well, you can't see anything from there. Come closer. I won't bite. All right. I still can't see anything. Just bend your neck this way while I take a little bite. <sighs> Just a minute, Eloise. Looks like there's someone at the door. Damn! Hurry back, Mr Jenkins! Hey, Eloise! Look who's here! Hello, Eloise! We've come to help. Couldn't let you stop take a load. If we all pitch in, we'll be finished in no time. Very thoughtful. Oh, I want our idea. It was mine. Hello, Eloise. Lucretia. I should have guessed. <laughs> I nearly had him. He was here. My teeth were there. One more second and oh, he'd have been mine. A miss is as good as a mile, Eloise, darling. But I was so close to Bombay blood. So was I until some pesky trainee vam got in my way. Is it me or is it hot in here? It's you. This is a cold, damp castle. Cracky, I feel as weak as a baby. This fight for Jenkins' blood has distracted us. We must feed soon or turn to dust. Well, let's go and find some blood. Wait a minute. Just think how sweet the Bombay blood would taste when your veins are screaming with hunger. Oh, delicious. But we would have to deny essential vampire law and share him. I can share. I can share. Shall I ask him to come over for dinner? Phone him now. Hello, Mr. Jenkins. I was just wondering if you would like to come over to my place for a late supper. My mouth's watering already. Can you believe it? He's going bowling with Debbie and Wayne. What's that? You chuck a big ball at some pins. I know that. Oh, shut up, I'm thinking. Well, there's no need to snap at me. This hunger is doing strange things to us. What are we going to do? We must feed tonight. The bowling alley is not far from here. We must get there as quickly as possible. Abduct Jenkins and share his blood, okay? I don't know, Lucretia. I feel so drained. Come on, Eloise, snap out of it. Thanks, Lucretia. I needed that slap round the face. Right, let's grab Mr. Jenkins. Get your cape. Sort my cape. I'm hungry for blood. Bombay blood. Let's go. Damn, who's that? Hello? It's me, Lucretia. Speak. What? Already? No. <gasps> Bloody hell. We are in deep shit now. Who was that? The Vampire Society. They've slapped the preservation order on him. Jenkins is out of bounds. Oh, no. It's no good. We are too late, Louise. We doomed to dust. No, it's not too late. Thanks for the slab, Louise, but we're both too weak and feeble to chase down some food now. 
How ironic that our greed for the ultimate gastronomic blood feast has been our downfall. Let's just sleep peacefully into a vampiric coma together. No, Lucretia! You can stop the slapping now, Eloise. It doesn't work. But it's got to work. Lean over here. Closer. Why? So I can do this. You're right. The slapping doesn't work. This is the end, Eloise. The game is over. And we have both lost. What's going to happen? It won't hurt. We just go to sleep. A long, deep sleep that ends in dust. Hold my hand. There. I feel very peaceful. Just drifting away. Drifting away. What's that? It's the sound of our death knell. No, it's my doorbell. Well, you'll have to get it. I'm too tired to move. I might be able to crawl over to the door. All right, I'm coming. Forget it, Lucretia. They'll go away. I may be close to eternal coma, but it's no reason to forget my manners. If I can just reach the door handle. Hello? What can I do for you two? Good evening. We're Jehovah's Witnesses. Thank God you've come. Would you allow us to come into your home and talk about the Lord? <sighs> Eloise, put the kettle on. Dinner's here. Twentieth Century Vampire was written by Joe Turner and starred Louise Lombard, Joanna Kanska, William Ivory, Jane Hazelgrove, and Fine Time Fontaine, and was produced by Liz Anstey. Twentieth Century Vampire by Joe Turner. Oh, mm. Eloise. Oh, Wayne. I love you, Eloise. Every gorgeous little bit of you. Mm. Wayne? Yeah? Is that your hand on my bum? Do you want me to stop? No, I like it. Mm. Oh, you taste so nice. So do you. Salty, meaty. Oh, I could just sink my teeth into that strong, manly neck. Mm. No! Stop it, that's enough. What's the matter? I nearly fell off the sofa. Um, it, it's not right, something's wrong. Uh, this music... It's romantic. It's crap. Oh, well, that's buggered the mood. Sorry, Wayne, that's just how I feel. I respect that, Eloise. And I respect you. But we've been courting for six weeks now. Are we ever going to have a shag? Pardon my French. It's complicated, Wayne. Actually, Eloise, it's not complicated at all. You see, the man and the woman love each other, so they go to bed and the man puts his... I know how to do it. I'm just not ready. I don't want to put pressure on you, Eloise, but I'm busting. If we don't do it soon, I might explode. I can see that, Wayne. I'm at the mercy of me hormones. Me too. You have hormones too? Of course I do. What? The same urges, the same desires. Look, Wayne, I want you, all right? I want you in the most primitive, bestial and sweaty way. I just need a little time to sort things out. Oh. You're worth waiting for, Eloise. How about a cuddle? Come here. Oh. Oh, I'm so chuffed you have hormones too. Oh, if you only knew what was really inside me. Oh, I'd like to get to explore the outside first. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> Do it again. Stand by, Dad. Flatmates, hold. Debbie! Oh! Sorry, I didn't realise you were at it. 
We were not at it. Why not? <laughs> it's none of your bloody business. Come on, Eloise. You've been going out for six weeks. You should have done it by now. How do you know we haven't? Well, look at Wayne's face. He's like a puppy waiting for a bone. Sorry, Eloise. My face is an open book. Besides, the walls are so thin in this flat, there's no way you could do it without me knowing. All right, just leave it. So, what's the problem? We haven't got a problem. Have you got a problem, Wayne? Down below? Oh, everything's fine on my undercarriage. Let me get this right. Wayne loves Eloise, Eloise loves Wayne, nature must take its course. It's not that simple. Yes, it is, Eloise. You see, the man and the woman love each other, so they go to bed and the man puts it... I know how to do it! <coughs> Lucretia! Are you in there? Oh, oh, Eloise. It's you. It's midnight. How come you're still asleep? I don't feel too good, Eloise. I've got a cold in my nose. <coughs> oh, I can see. Sounds like a real stinker. Oh, I'm confined to coffin with a hot water bottle and a Vicks vapor wrap until I can sh 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 shake it off. <coughs> Oh, frankly, I'm not surprised. It's bloody cold in this castle. And drafty. Uh, you know. could do with some double glazing. I know, I know. Well, you tuck yourself in and I'll fix your lemsip. When I get that feeling, I get sexual healing. No need to hack at that leg of lamb with so much venom, Wayne. It's already dead. Sorry, Mr Jenkins. I'm working out my frustrations. A strapping lad like yourself shouldn't have frustrations, Wayne. I'm a gentleman, Mr Jenkins. I'm glad to hear it, Wayne. A gentleman is never indiscreet about affairs of the art. I see. Trouble in the bed department, is it? How did you guess? I don't know. Just looking at your face, it popped into my mind. Oh, I'm going to have to start wearing a balaclava. Hold on to your natural juices for as long as you can, Wayne. For once they've gone, they've gone forever. But I have needs and urges, Mr Jenkins. So do I, Wayne. Get away. And I have but one piece of advice for you, Wayne. Cold showers and a good slapping with a bendy switch cools the ardour and does wonders for your circulation. Hitting yourself with a stick. Doesn't that hurt? Yes, but in a nice way. There you go. Steaming hot. Oh, that should clear your passages. Thank you. <sighs> you know how you always said we could, um... Talk about anything. Yes. I want to talk about sex. I see. Birds and beast types. What do you want to know? I'm a bit confused. Uh, I'll start at the beginning. You see, the man and the woman who love each other go to bed and the man I puts his... I know all of that. So, what more do you need? Every time Wayne and I are snogging... I get these feelings. Oh, that's normal. You're a vampire, not a nun. But I don't know what sort of feelings they are. I don't know if I want to make passionate love to him or suck his blood. The two impulses are very similar, except, of course, that the urge to drink the beautiful ruby red blood visits but once a month. And we can enjoy a good shag every day of the week. What can I do? You must listen to your heart, Eloise. It will tell you when the time is right for you. Well, I hope it's worth all the fuss. Physical love is a wondrous thing, especially if you can find a good man. I am proud to say that I have enjoyed the three greatest lovers of recent centuries. Casanova, Errol Flynn and uh, Paul Daniels. Paul Daniels? Yes. Only those who have loved him know how Paul Daniels can set the sheets on fire, move the earth, and make the wardrobe disappear. That Debbie McGee is a lucky woman. Have you had many lovers, then? A lady never counts. Roughly? 17,426. Something around there. Bloody hell! Don't you worry about diseases? <laughs> My poor little naive vamp. There are these things called condoms. They are made out of rubber and the man sleeps one I thing. know what condoms are. Mm. How good is your way in a, a DIY? Oh, very proficient, I should have thought. I have an idea. Good, I need every bit of help I can get. It's time I had a holiday. 
two weeks caravanning in Transylvania could be just the thing I need to shake off this cold. And while I am away, you and Wayne could castle sit for me. That's a brilliant idea. Maybe a little time alone would help you to sort out your feelings. <laughs> And if things don't get romantic, you could get him to fix the plumbing and fit some draft excluders. When can you go? <laughs> Such a hurry to get rid of me and turn my gorgeous castle into a love shack. If you don't mind me saying so, Lucretia, you've let this place get into a bit of a state. Thank you, Wayne. Wet rattling chains are a weakness of mine. <laughs> Beautiful, aren't they? Have you got everything? Uh, passport, tickets, travellers, checks, packed lunch... Bit of our text and a feature fireplace, and this could be a really smart plan. I think I've got everything. But is there anything else I need to tell you? Well, I think I've got the idea now, Lucretia. The man loves the woman, so they go to bed and the man puts his... Their box! The box? Well, that's a new one on me. Listen carefully. This is very important. You see this dark oak box on the table with a jewel-encrusted cross on the top? Yes. Whatever you do, don't open it. Lucretia, you're such a drama queen. Not the old Pandora's box cliché. I'm deadly serious, Eloise. Under no circumstances open that box. Why? What will happen? I've no time to explain. Please respect ancient vampire law and leave the box alone. All right, all right. Come on. Get a move on or you'll miss your coach. I'm going, I'm going. Have a nice holiday, Lucretia. Send us a postcard. Have fun, lovebirds. Alone at last. Two weeks in our own castle. And so much DIY to do. Oh, I can't get no satisfaction, but I try, and I try, and I try. Do you have Go. to sing? Well, it's compulsory. Federation of Master Builders, Rule 43. Ah! Oh. Oh. What have you done? Oh, I've nicked my thumb. Look, I'm bleeding. Really? Oh, it's only a spot, you big crybaby. I wonder if your aunt's got any plasters. Maybe in this dark oak box with a jewel-encrusted cross on top. Don't touch that box! Why not? It might be a first aid box. Come here, wounded soldier. I'll kiss it better. Oh, all right then. Mm. Eloise? Eloise? Mm. I think that should do mm. the trick. Mm. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> better now? Well, much. Look, no bleeding. In fact, no blood. Cracky, you've got some suck on you, Eloise. It's gone blue. Don't worry, you'll soon get the colour back. Now, be honest. What do you think of this wallpaper I've chosen? Are you sure Lucretia wants her bare castle walls adorned with flock wallpaper? I am a woman of taste, Wayne. Besides, everybody loves flock wallpaper. It's timeless. All right, you've convinced me. I'll just paste this strip and we'll have it up in no time. Are you sure that step ladder's safe? You don't want to fall off? Yeah, I got it from my own base. Yeah, it looks a bit rickety. Give it a shake. OK. Safe as houses. Finished pasting. Right, I'll climb up the ladder and you pass me that freshly pasted strip of paper. I'm not sure about this step ladder. I'll oh, stop moaning and get on with it. Pass it up here. There you go. Oh, stretch way I can't reach. Careful, Eloise, you're overbalancing. Don't be daft. I've nearly got it. Just lean a bit further over and... Eloise, uh, you're uh, going to... Uh, El hey! Eloise? Eloise, are you all right? Oh, my head hurts. First aid, that's what you need. Wait a minute. There's Lucretia's dark oak first aid box with a jewel-encrusted cross on top. Wayne, don't touch that box. Don't be daft. This is an emergency. Maybe there's some bandages or a packet of aspirin in here. No. Ah, open sesame. Can you hear a whooshing sound, Eloise? Wayne! Eloise! There's no sign of medical supplies, just a forced end gale. Shut the box, Wayne! I'm trying, but it's bloody windy. Get the lid closed! I'm trying! Wayne! Shut that box! Rightio. Well, that was refreshing. How's your head? You took a nasty tumble. Oh, 
I'm fine. Sure? I'll prove it by treating you to a slap up pub lunch. Are you going to eat that pickle? Well, at least there's nothing wrong with your appetite. You've hardly touched your ploughman's. I'm not hungry. I feel sort of funny inside. I'll just nip to the lavvy. Oh, would you get me another packet of smoky bacon? OK. It, you can have my cheese. Great. Nothing like a good crack on the head to get your gastric juices flowing. I hope Wayne's all right. We'll never get the decorating done if he goes poorly on me. So, at last we meet again. Oh, you're back. That was quick. Did you remember me crisps? I know nothing of these crisps. I don't know what's wrong with you today, Wayne. You're bloody useless. And why are you talking in that silly accent? Who is this Wayne? Stop mocking about, Wayne. Ah, I understand. This mortal body once belonged to a man called Wayne. My congratulations to Wayne. It is a fine body. I wonder if it is strong enough to smash this table. What do you think you're playing at, Wayne? You die today, Eloise. I'll be back. Wayne! What, what, what am I doing here? A minute ago, I, I was standing in the lavvy about to... Oh, bloody hell. <sighs> Tackle tucked safely out of sight. Could have had an embarrassing moment there, Eloise. Hey, what have you done to that table? It wasn't me, it was you. Couldn't have been, I was in the toilet. Oh, right, you two. Out. You're bored. I'll not have wanton violence in my pub. Come on, on your way. I tell you, I didn't break the flaming table. Well, if you didn't, who did? I did. So, you admit it? I am a man of honour. I am the Burgermeister. You're talking funny again, Wayne. Free at last. You should never have locked me up, Eloise. Two centuries in a small oak box has made me very stiff. I hope this is a joke, Wayne. I am not Wayne! That wallpapering table cost us 15 quid at home base! And now it is firewood. Ready to fight, Eloise? I haven't the foggiest idea what you're talking about. You have grown stupid over the years, Eloise. This time I shall win our duel and consign you to everlasting hell. I did not smash that table. Wayne, you're back. What do you mean back? I haven't been... Oh, what have you done to the wallpapering table? That cost 15 quid at home base. It wasn't me. Just shut up and listen. Remember when you opened that box? It was empty. I know this might sound a bit far-fetched, Wayne, but I have reason to believe that you have been possessed by an evil spirit. Oh, that bonk on the head has affected you more than I thought. Bonk on the head? Yeah, <laughs> that's probably it. You must accept the challenge of the Burgermeister. In two hours, we duel to the death. Hasta la vista, Eloise. <laughs> Perhaps you should have a lie down. Yeah, maybe you're right. No, I've got a better idea. Why don't we make love? Oh, what? Uh, are you feeling all right? I've never felt better, Wayne. Here, sit down while I stroke you. Oh, I, I, I'm sitting, I'm sitting. Oh, crikey, this must be my lucky day. You do trust me, Wayne. Y yeah, of course I do. It's just... I have this fantasy. Oh, <laughs> fantasy, eh? Would you help me act out my fantasy? Uh, yeah. <coughs> yes, please. Do we get to wear costumes? I have to tie you to this chair. Hang on a minute. Tie me up. And have my wicked, wicked way with you. There's some rope over there by the bucket. Perfect. I knew you'd be happy to help a hot girl fulfil her kinky desires. Oh, kinky. First I tie you up. Nice and tight. No, that is tight. So that you can't move a muscle. Can't move? I, I can't breathe. Good. I've got you now, Mr. Burgermeister. Is this part of your fancy, Eloise? Shut up, Wayne. Oh, I like it. Be firm with me. Right. Come out, Burgermeister. I'm ready for you now. It's me, Burgermeister. Take me now. I'm ready. Shut it, Wayne. This is a weird fantasy, Eloise. <laughs> You're so pathetic, Eloise. I could break these puny ropes as easily as freezing. Two hours, Eloise. 
I hope you're ready to die. So, uh, when are you going to get kinky? Oh, Wayne, I'm in big trouble. You can't be. We haven't done anything yet. We opened the box and now you're possessed by the evil Burgermeister who's going to kill me in two hours. Is this the fantasy or is this real? This is real. Then untie me and I'll help you fight off the Burgermeister. I can't do that. You are the Burgermeister. Then I shall fight myself to protect you, Eloise. Oh, don't be a pillock. I wish Lucretia was here. Could someone help me with this bloody luggage? Lucretia, you're back. Oh, can you believe it? A strike at air traffic control. Transylvanian Airways, eh? I should have flown Virgin. Lucretia, I've got a confession. We're in big trouble. Too late, Louise. I already know. You do? Yes. That flock wallpaper is disgusting. It'll have to come down. We opened the box. You did what? We opened the box. You stupid vamp. I take it that the Burgermeister has possessed Wayne. That's right. Well, there is no point tying him into a chair, Louise. He's much too strong for that. It's worked so far. I can't move. So, you're here too, Lucretia. Yes, Bergermeister. I am Eloise's tutor and vampire guardian. I have come for Eloise. It was a mistake, Bergermeister. The box was opened by accident. Eloise has only known her true nature for six weeks. I have been waiting for centuries. I appeal to your sense of honor, Bergermeister. Postpone the challenge. Give your opponent time to prepare for the duel. We fight today. Elvis will be dead before the sun sets. Look, we should do something. Very well. You leave me no choice. We're putting that bucket on his head. Stop him. No, but at least we won't have to look at his ugly face. I'll be back. What's going on? It's gone dark. Don't panic, Wayne. There is a bucket on your head. Oh, that's all right, then. Go to sleep, Wayne. Okay. Oh, I wish I could do that. Lucretia, you've got to help. What is happening? We are in deep shit, Eloise. The Burgermeister is an excellent duelist. But who is he? What is he? An evil doppelganger. Every vampire has mortal enemy. Literally one mortal whose spirits enjoy eternal life with one purpose, to kill his vampire partner. And mine is the Burgermeister. <sighs> During each incarnation, he must appear and challenge you to a duel. You name the place, he chooses the weapons. This is ancient vampire law. Well, can you do anything? I was going to wait until you had trained in the arts of combat before telling you of the Burgermeister. Then you could choose your moment to face him. <gasps> Can't you help me fight him? No. Why not? Ancient vampire law. I'm getting a bit pissed off with ancient vampire law. All I can do is help you choose the place and use your last hour to teach you all I can of dueling protocol. We must begin at once. Attack me again. That's it. Lunge and parry. The essence of fine soft play. I'm trying my best. Extend. Stretch. Aim for the head or the heart. Head or heart. And remember, the best form of defense is attack. Ha! Ow! That hurt! The Burgermeister will not have protective rubber tips on his sword. You should have seen that coming. I'll never get the hang of this. Maybe you'll get lucky and he'll choose pistols. Is he any good with a pistol? The finest shot in all Austria. Lucky me. <sighs> Have you chosen a venue for the duel? What is the point? I don't stand a chance. You must not give in, Eloise. You are young. You are strong. Your reflexes are quick. And if you really believe it, you can beat the Burgermeister. But he is an expert duelist. I couldn't even beat him with a co-op price gun. This is your choice of place? Yes, what is it called? The co-op. It's a supermarket. Very well. I choose weapons. And it shall be pistol. <laughs> you play into my hands, Burgermeister. What is that supposed to mean? Nothing. Just uh, trying to sound tough. Choose your pistol. They are a matched pair. Nice box. 
Uh, this one will do for me. Very well. No, 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 hang on, hang on. Let me try the other one. You must choose one pistol. Put one back. I've got to compare them. Just be careful. Each is loaded with one lead shot. Just one? I only need one. You didn't bring any spare bullets? Of course not. You're not tradition. So what if I just shoot these two pistols into the air? You won't. It would contradict the very essence of ancient vampire lore. Ancient vampire what? I suppose you think that's clever? Well, no guns, no jewel. Back in your box, old Burgermeister. See you in a few centuries. This is not over, Elvis. Yeah? What are you going to do about it? Kill you with my bare hands. You and his army. I need no army to crush you like a beetle underfoot. You wouldn't hit me. I'm a girl. Oh, no? Ow! You bastard! I think of you not as a girl, but as an agent of the devil in need of a good kicking. Ow! Well, two can kick. Oh! Nice to know a good boot to the ghoulie still works after all these centuries. Bye-bye, Burgermeister. Where are you going? You want me? You have to catch me. Where's she gone? Over here, Burgermeister. What's that you're holding? Want a closer look? Here. Oh! Bullseye! Heinz? Spaghetti hoops? This supermarket is packed with ammunition. Hey, Burgermeister! Catch! What? Oh! oh. <laughs> Faggots in gravy. I'm being assailed by strange cannonballs. And family packs of Finder's fish fingers. Oh! Where's she gone now? What's that noise? Prepare for a hail of frozen peas from my shopping trolley chariot. <laughs> Just try that again! You asked for it, Buster! Coming in for another pass! Hang on! I'm going too fast! I'm going to crash into that nearly arranged soft drink display! Ah! So, now I've got you. Take that! Oh, is that your best punch? Try this! <coughs> you spawn of Satan! Oh, you Austrian fascist! Oh, I got you now. Oh, get your fat paws off my throat, you burgermeister! I'm going to squeeze the life out of you. Well, two can play at that game. You're choking me. Good. I can't breathe. <clears throat> me neither. Let's go. You first. All right, two, three. One, three. Two. One, two. three. <laughs> <coughs> you fight well, vampire. You're not so bad yourself, Burgermeister. You have strangled me. Have I ever mentioned how sexy you look when you're half strangled? Not for the past few centuries. Would it offend ancient vampire law if I were to kiss you hard and strong? Sod ancient vampire law. Let's do it, Burgermeister, amid the wreckage of this supermarket. Eloise. 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 Wayne, you were magnificent. Eloise, wake up. Are you all right? Oh, I'm, I'm covered in wallpaper paste. It was a dream. A, a dream. You've only been out a few seconds. I told you that stepladder was knackered. Wayne, I'm ready to make love. Are you ready? I've been ready for weeks. Come here, Wayne. Kiss me. Oh. <sighs> I've never told you. How attractive you look, half drenched in wallpaper paste. Not for the past few centuries. What? Shush, Wayne. Make love to me. Oh. Well, I waited so long for this moment. Shush, Wayne. Let's just do oh. it. Oh, oh, uh. oh. Sorry, Eloise. I think I just have. The 20th Century Vampire was written by Joe Turner and starred Louise Lombard, Joanna Kanska, Wilhelm Ivory, Jane Hazelgrove, and Fine Time Fontaine. And it was produced by Liz Anstey. Back in your box, Burgermeister. Oh!